Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Ooh. How are all of you doing today? I'll tell you how I'm doing. I'll tell you how I'm doing. Jeff clearly is having himself a morning, enjoying a stogie. Where's Good your cigar? Him. It's Victory Monday. Uh, you know what? Today. Did you forget it? No, I did not forget a cigar. Uh, I didn't okay. forget anything today, actually. Oh. What you see is what you get today. Because for seven months, for seven long months, I worked day and night doing this show. I tried to tell every single one of you that this could and would happen. You mocked me. You mocked the quarterback. He's the pick six guy. Congratulations. You are one of, if not the lowest form of human intelligence on the earth. I hope all of you are satisfied this morning. I want to start off with thank yous, obviously. We have to start the show off on the right way. I'd like to thank... Just a few people. Okay. A few people who have not only been on this this charge. It doesn't ask her speech. Shut up, fish. All right, cool. I would like to start by thanking the Detroit Lions. Sheila Ford, Martha Ford, William Clay Ford, along with Matt Millen, Rod Marinelli, Jim Schwartz, Jim Caldwell, Matt Patricia, Bob Quinn, yep. Martin Mayhew along the way. Thank you. Eric Ebron, special shout out. You get one too this morning. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for preparing Matthew Stafford for any and every possible situation or scenario that leads to his football team losing. You know why? Because he was ready for last night. Run game not working? Okay. OBJ goes down? Okay. My best wide receivers double coverage? Basically the entire... What, second half on? Okay, no problem. Oh, my receivers drop passes and they get interception? All right, all right, all right no problem. No problem. I, I dealt with it in Detroit. So the first thank you this morning goes to Detroit. The second and third thank yous go to two very good friends of mine, dear friends of mine. I'll start with Justin Spiro. I'm sure you all know, big fan of the show. I'm a big fan of his. He is on the Enlightenment train. If I want to call it that this morning. Yep. Along with Jim Costa from 971. Special shout out to Jim. Jim, have a great day today. Enjoy it. Smart individuals. Matthew Stafford had been had been preparing for last night and really the entire LA experience for 12 seasons. No run game. His single best wide receiving option being double covered the whole time. No help from his coaching. Zero. Running the ball on second and median and second and short situations. Four straight drives, and they get stuffed or loss of yardage on every single possible scenario. But it didn't matter. It didn't matter because he was ready for the moment. He was ready for the moment. And when you needed him to make a throw, he made the throw. Do I have to bring up the no-look throw on third down in Cooper Cup? I don't think so. For seven months, sat up here, and I try to point out, you know, the clear and obvious. I always tell you guys, I'll be honest with you. It's not about just right and wrong all the time here. I try to give you a perspective and information that can either sway you one way or another. And I don't expect you ever to change your opinions, but there are some times where you just have to. Sometimes right is just right, and you can't argue it any other way. To every single one of you so-called doubters, clowns, trolls, you know, the gatekeepers, all you Detroit Lions gatekeepers, you know, you're not a fan of the Detroit Lions if you've supported Matthew Stafford along the way. All of you who have constantly held on to dear life by pointing out that, yes, he throws interceptions. I don't know a quarterback in my lifetime that didn't. Or my favorite quote of the year, let's see him throw more than 17 times. Oh, let's see him. Tom Brady. Ask Tom Brady what 
Matthew Stafford looks like throwing the ball more than 17 times. Ask Kyle Shanahan. Why don't you ask Joe Burrow and Zach Taylor last night? You are not only wrong, but your arguments and what you used to try to discredit everything he had accomplished in L.A., even prior to the Super Bowl run, just winning a division and winning the playoff game, everything that you decided you were going to discredit using, quote-unquote, your sports knowledge, or should I say, like thereof. Congratulations to all of you, and you know who you are. And I'm not even going to name-call you this morning. And I've already seen your tweets, happy for Stafford. I got. I, I saw him already. That's fine. I am. I refuse to acknowledge or mention people's names who have zero accountability and just won't admit they were wrong. And I told you guys three weeks ago, if I can sit up here and say I was wrong about Panay Sewell, which was one of my biggest arguments this year, if you were following the show, you can be wrong about Matthew Stafford too. It's fair to say Matthew Stafford's time <clears throat> in Detroit was one of underachievement. Why? Because for 12 years you had the guy in the door and you never did anything. And may I remind you again, in his first six seasons, six full seasons, he had a 500 record, took you to the playoffs three times. What did you give him? Eric Ebron. Where was the offensive line? Didn't have one. Where was the defense? Number two ranked overall, but when they played good teams, they were wearing 21st and 22nd in the league. It's okay. I'm sure you all expected a big show, a flamethrower, hookers, dancers. It's an intervention today. We're just today, speaking. Today you get a therapy session yep. with Adam. That's what it today is. I am giving you two hours, non, no billing, totally free, no scam involved. Ooh. I'm giving you two hours of free therapy. And you have no choice but to listen. How nice of you, Adam. You have no choice, and I'm not going to bill you. I don't care if you're going through Blue Cross, Molina. I don't care what your health care plan is. I accept all of you. All of you are welcome this morning. And you're going to get me for two hours. And I'm going to explain to you why last night happened. Last night did not just happen because of a Von Miller acquisition. Because of an Odell Beckham acquisition. Or even because of a Matthew Stafford acquisition for the Los Angeles Rams. It started five, six years ago when the Rams decided to hire a 30-year-old head coach who they knew wouldn't be available in two years if they tried to get him and the guy they hired didn't work out. Get to the Super Bowl twice in those five years. And you now are Super Bowl champions. Risk takers. Can we talk about culture? I love uh, culture. Andrew Whitworth talked about culture last night. I hope all of you really watched it. And that'll be our segue into the next segment. But culture, right? You know what's the definition of culture to McVeigh and Whitworth? Not just how to communicate to guys, but cultivating winning football. Five seasons, not a single losing season under Sean McVeigh. Walked into a 3-13 and football team. Or I believe... 2-14, and 14, I can't recall. One of the two. Last night happened for a plethora of reasons. And obviously, number nine, Matthew effing Stafford. We'll get to him after the break, but Maddie, good morning. I love the glasses. Good morning. Thank you. We have a live read to do, don't we? We do. We and have to do. who do we owe the pleasure? Who's the first one off of this amazing, amazing Sunday performance we saw? Who, who, who do we get to shout out first? We get to shout out the Sports Marketing Agency. Well, that is my cue, and let me do that for you. <laughs> SMA, our friends at the SMA. SMA has been leveraging pro athletes and other notables for a decade against the issues around mental health and substance use disorder and with our friend with the help of nfl alumni sean jordan you've been able or he's been able to save lives and take a stand against these issues soon coming to woodward sports is the sports marketing agency podcast named this is the f word series on fontanel if you are struggling with substance abuse or mental health they are here to help please go to the sportsma.com and please tell them woodward sports sent you when you get there six dark corners a driveway and a patio five windows that could become doors. Every house has unique security challenges. 
Guardian Alarm has more tech, more team, and more ways to help keep them all safe. Get a professionally designed and installed security and smart home system from Guardian Alarm. Sign up today and get a free video device. Guardian Alarm. Smart. Right from the start. Call 1-800-STAY-OUT. Put on a show here and that's how you answer. We love our sports. We just wish they'd love us back. Detroit Sports for Detroit Sports fans. Woodward Sports. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us on the Morning Woodward Show here on the Woodward Sports Network. It's a calm day here on the Woodward Sports Network. We get to talk about Matthew effing Stafford because we are not swearing today. All right. Matthew We're Stafford. Zen. Let, let's, let's start with this, okay? Let's start with it. 20, what, 26 of 40, 283, three touchdowns, two picks. Will, but we both saw the interceptions. I'm sure we all did. Yep. The uh, essentially on third and long punt slash heave downfield where Van Jefferson gave him zero yeah. effort. But hey, <clears throat> look, need a play. Whatever. Need, yeah. He tried to make a play interception. I have no problem with it. Touchback. What? Not the end of the world. And then the second <clears throat> one, our, our good friends at Notre Dame. Uh, the so, quote unquote football school. Yeah. Notre Dame. How'd that wide receiver do last night? I really don't understand anymore what you guys want from Matthew Stafford. And I don't understand this hatred or this this scenario that you're trying to play out in your own heads where you're somehow still right about this look you're wrong and not only are you dead wrong about this you got to accept it and move on let's start with Matthew Stafford's record with the Detroit Lions in 12 seasons Mm. In the postseason. In those 12 seasons, he's 0-3. 63% completion percentage, 900 yards, four touchdowns, three interceptions in those three games. Not the best stat line. Seemed like a guy that was trying to overcome a lot, if you ask me. But hey, yep. hey. I'm willing to look past it this morning. You know why? Because in one season removed from Detroit, and not Detroit, because I don't want the city to be given this, this abusive tag. This, this, this monologue I'm going to go for this morning, the next five minutes, is going to be dedicated to Martha Ford, William Clay Ford, Sheila Ford, and every idiot president you have hired GM coach prior to Stafford and after. And his one season with the Los Angeles Rams, Matthew Stafford, in the postseason, 4-0. 70% completion percentage. 1,200 yards, 9 touchdowns, 3 interceptions in 4 games. Not bad if you ask me. And 2 of those interceptions came obviously in the Super Bowl. 7 game winning drives the entire year. 3 of them in the playoffs. 3 consecutive, may I, may I add to the conversation. He started with sending Tom Brady into retirement. Sent Kyle Shanahan looking for a new quarterback, probably looking at the bench like Trey Lance, get ready. And he sent Zach Taylor and pretty boy Joe Burrow home, crying, upset, hurt, with another game-winning fourth quarter drive. What do you know? <clears throat> he had seven of them this year. Three in the playoffs, and of course one coming in the most important game of the season in the Super Bowl. And it just felt like he was losing more and more starters as the season progressed. That's how it felt. <laughs> and going into Sunday, yeah. let's not forget, I try, I, again... I try to tell you guys these things, and you don't listen. You don't listen. Matthew Stafford going into Sunday was the best fourth quarter quarterback in the entire NFL, not only in the regular season, but in the postseason. Better than Brady, better than Rodgers, better than Mahomes, Allen, Herbert, Burrow. But you refuse to acknowledge this. Why? Well, because he had 17 interceptions in the regular season. Really? Okay. Okay. You die on that hill. Enjoy. You're alone. Nobody cares. <clears throat> that, that was Matthew Stafford summed up all season. And moving forward, I will get it passed by Michigan legislation. You are no longer allowed to address him as Matt or Matthew Stafford. Mm. From now on, you address him as Super Bowl champion Matthew fucking Stafford. And no, this doesn't mean a damn thing for the Detroit Lions in terms of accomplishments. You didn't accomplish a damn thing. 
I don't want to hear that from anybody this morning. The Lions didn't do crap. They can get a postcard in the mail. Thank you. Thank you for surrounding him with a bunch of chaos for 12 years. So when he came here and it happened to us, he was ready for the moment. But we actually had a defense that could give him an opportunity to do something. We actually had a head coach who had the gall, the nerve in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl to run an end. Essentially an end around, if you want to call it an end around. But they call it a jet sweep. Yep. They run a jet sweep on fourth down to the best player on their team, who's the Super Bowl MVP, Cooper Cup, and he gets it. Yep. <clears throat> Detroit, that's why for 12 years you couldn't get it done. Jeff? Can, can you address a section of people for me? Because I've seen this on Twitter, and I saw you address it to a couple people, but it seems we still have people in the chat that are like this. What about the people that say um, Jared Goff would have won that game for him? Can really? You please just address would Jared Goff... W- would have would golf have beaten Tampa Bay? Yes or no? Absolutely not. I'll give not. you Arizona. <laughs> Absolutely not. I will give you Arizona. Zero see, chance. I'm a polite man this morning. I'm I'm giving and taking. Yeah, Arizona, I could see. Arizona, Jared Goff would have won that game. I have no problem saying that, even though I think it's an, a stupid and irrelevant argument, and it's an argument only made by children. So I'm ad- uh, this is why it's a therapy right. session this morning. I'm addressing children. I'm helping children <laughs> in need who are not able to form comprehensive opinions. <laughs> yeah. They're just wrong all the time, and they cry about it. Would he have beaten Tampa Bay? No. No, No, he wouldn't have. He wouldn't have made those throws after taking a sack on first down with 31 seconds left in the game to get them all the way downfield. He doesn't make those throws. No. He doesn't overcome a disaster game against San Francisco, not only by him, but the entire team was just bad. Coaching decisions, bad. Receivers, bad. Drops. Do I have to start? It was a tough game against San Francisco. Golf doesn't win that game. Golf wins you the game against Joe Burrow? Are you sure? I don't think so. Yeah, absolutely not. You know what Jared Goff does on that final drive where they scored the fade route to Cooper Cup? Goff either fumbles, throws an interception, or throws the ball away on fourth down. Those are your three options with Jared Goff. He does not win you that game yesterday. And the Rams do not get to the Super Bowl without him. You know why? Because they traded him for this exact reason. What happens when everything around you is not perfect, Jared? Can you win football games? And in Jared Goff's career, he has proven he can't win football games when things aren't going correctly. Just like a Ryan Tannehill. Just like a Baker Mayfield. Just like a Kirk Cousins. Yep. That's his class. Don't talk to me about Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford's in a whole different class now. We're done. Matthew Stafford grew up in chaos in the NFL. And when he left it for one year and went to a competent organization with a good owner, with a good GM, with a good coach, and a good roster, he gave you a Super Bowl in one year. If that isn't an indictment, not only on your selfish opinions, you quote-unquote truth seekers or truthers, if that isn't enough for you, I'm not even going to talk to you this morning. Jeff? Jeff? Man, you've been speaking facts this morning. And, and I want to add on to that by saying, <clears throat> and I started on Friday saying out of all the teams that have won the Super Bowl, 38 of them won the turnover battle. And that all stopped on Sunday because the Rams had two more turnovers than the Bengals. They still found a way to win. And you talk about that defensive line. We talked about how important it was going to be in this game. Joe Burrow was sacked seven times. And just to talk about Joe Burrow for the whole season, he was sacked 70 times, including regular season and, and postseason. That's third most of all time, only behind Dar- uh, David Carr and Randall Cunningham. So Joe Burrow, they got to fix, fix the offensive line. But Matthew Stafford, like, and honestly, the Super Bowl, the NFC Championship game, all of these games couldn't have ended in a better fashion. Where they needed Matthew late in the game, and he was able to deliver. And then Aaron Donald ended up closing the game back-to-back weeks. Aaron Donald helped and did just that. Not to include Matthew. Man, money. And you saw it. The, the, the faith throw to Cooper Cup in the end zone, um, trusting his arm. They couldn't get anything to go on the ground. I think they were averaging 1.9 yards per carry. And Matthew still found a way to, to get them in the ball game, especially on the 15-play drive, Adam. 15 plays, they ran the ball once or twice. The rest was all Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup. Um, they obviously, they were doubling uh, Cooper Cup. They, had, they were running man-to-man coverage. Didn't matter. Stafford was still finding a way to get it in there. So, I mean, if you still, if anybody still has doubts on why Matthew they traded for him or they would, if, they, if they're still going to sit here and say Jared would have won that game, um, I don't know. I'm never going to convince them at this point. Because if, if you were watching the same Super Bowl I was watching, 
Matthew Stafford, two of those interceptions, one was bounced off a of receiver's hands, the other one was a punt, clearly, uh, to try and make a play. I mean, come on. If you watch the same game I watched, you understand now why they traded for Matthew Stafford. He was the, the bow at the end of the present. He, uh, he, he, to- he tied it all together, and honestly, what a season. By him, by the Rams, and, and next year, they're going to be deadly. We'll see what Aaron Donald does. Well, let's talk about it, man. Let's talk about it 23-20. to 20. Mm-hmm. Beautiful game. Uh, frustrating. Yeah. Really frustrating. Odell going down. Joe Burrow getting rolled up under, even though it happened to Stafford. But, you know, it looked like Joe Burrow's knee, was, I mean, got bent in a very awkward way. But I want to forget the injuries and talk about three things. The first being, I got to witness a 38- and a 36-year-old head coach go toe-to-toe in the Super Bowl. That was special. And the 38-year-old was a 36-year-old's assistant a few years ago before he got the job in Cincinnati. Isn't that awesome? And the story of Les Need, Andrew Whitworth, and Sean McVay, that trio is a major factor in why the Rams were able to get to where they are today. That is a fact. Without that core understanding of leadership, drafting Gaines, drafting Van Jefferson, Akers, acquiring Sony Michelle, Daryl Henderson. Going out and finding players that can contribute to a football team. Credit to all of them. And then the third thing, one of the biggest, the biggest impacts I've seen on a game of football, obviously, was the Super Bowl MVP himself, Cooper Cup. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people messaged me last night. Did you have a problem with it not going to Stafford? Three touchdowns, two 880 yards, uh, the game-winning drive. I thought it How do you not Donald. give it to him? To be honest... I had four people that if they awarded the MVP to, I wouldn't have had an issue with. Matthew Stafford, obviously. Yeah. Cooper Cup, obviously. Aaron Donald and Ashawn Robinson. Those were my four guys. Yeah. Had they awarded it to any one of those individuals, I would have had no problem. And I really don't have a problem with Cooper Cup. The guy was getting bracket coverage. He was having a safety trail the entire way, especially after OBJ went down. And you know what? He ran the routes. He ran the tough routes he had to run. <clears throat> and he helped win that game for him. Yeah. He absolutely did. And I'll get to this later. I believe at what? 9-13. Yep. At 9-13, I'm going to tell you why Cooper Cup has had the single greatest season for a wide receiver in NFL history, and it's not even close. Oh, the stats are ridiculous. Not only the stats, the accomplishments, yeah. the impact. I can go into it again. I try to warn you guys. You don't listen enough. You're too busy looking at my tie, the glasses, the hookah, the cigars. You're not listening enough. Sat up there yesterday on the pregame show. Stick crying about Calvin Johnson. I'd rather have Calvin than Cooper Cup on this team. Yeah? Yeah, no. I'll stick by what I said yesterday. Cooper Cup on this Rams team? I'd definitely rather have him. And it showed why last night. Calvin Johnson doesn't run those out routes. He runs the fades. He runs the verticals, the digs, the comeback routes, sure. Slant routes, sure. Calvin is great. It has nothing to do with Calvin, honestly, this morning. But the point is, for that Rams team, Cooper Cup is basically their Calvin Johnson in terms of how impactful he is, how important he is. And I'm not going to let anybody just... You know, disregard. Oh, anybody, any great wide receiver could be doing what Cooper Cup is doing for the Rams. Really? You name me one wide receiver in the NFL that had the impact Cooper Cup has had this year. Devontae Adams, right? He's the best wide receiver in the NFL. He's home. Oh, yeah, he's watching. He had eight catches against the Niners, but it didn't seem like it was any in it. It doesn't seem like it had any impact on the game. Cooper Cup impacted the game, and he won the MVP for a reason, Jeff. It was a great game. Yeah, We'll get to the refs. I'm sure you, you all want to know what we think of the refs. We'll get to that a little later. We'll go to break in a bit. But regarding the refs... It gave them both sides a little bit. I mean... It, it was one-sided the whole game. And it wasn't even egregious. I thought the referees did a fantastic job. Until they missed the OPI call. Yeah. Yeah. And that set the tone for what you saw in the last drive. If you think they weren't throwing flags on any hold, any grab, any sort of move after botching that OPI call, which I promise you they saw on the big screen, if you didn't think a makeup call was coming, you haven't watched the NFL for the last 30 years. You, you want to tell me makeup calls don't exist? 
Huh. I don't know what you've been watching. But Maddie, we got to go to break. When we get back, it's time. The moment I've been waiting for. Your therapy session with myself. Well, before we go to break, we do need to hear about Lady Janes. Well, listen, guys. Lady Janes, they can help you out. And they've done a good job helping me out during this Super Bowl victory. And let's be honest, we like simple stuff, and we also like things uncomplicated. So, like Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, you could walk in, sign in, sit down, and before you know it, you're handsome and clean. Get to Lady Jane's, open 10 to 8, 7 days a week, walk in anytime, because it is wicked awesome. Life is full of hard choices. We're here to make one of life's biggest decisions as simple as possible. My name is Christina Gennari, and for over 20 years, I've helped hundreds of families buy and sell homes. We cover all of Metro Detroit and more, from large luxury homes to starter homes. We will work hard to make sure that you get the home of your dreams. So if you're in the market today or even thinking about buying or selling in the future, make the obvious choice. Christina Gennari, the obvious choice in real estate. Visit us at soldchristina.com today. And a miraculous catch. Follow us everywhere. Just search Woodward Sports on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, IG, and more. More, 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 more. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us here on the Morning Woodward Show on the Woodward Sports Network. Also featured on the Roar on 99.1, 93.5, and 94.7 HD2. Adam, <clears throat> now is the time. Step into my office. <laughs> Step into my office. I didn't make an appointment. Have a seat. I did make an appointment, actually. No appointments <laughs> needed. No, oh, wow. No Whoa, appointments okay. needed. No You're appointments all welcome needed. to have a seat oh, nice. in my lovely reclining sofa. Oh. You're the nice. I'm already here. Have a seat. I'll fetch you a drink. Oh, oh perfect. Oh. I'll fetch I'll you a drink. I'll take a pour over, please. Have a seat. He got me a cigar and everything. You're have a making seat. making me feel welcome. Let's... I, as a certified therapist, a physician... Someone with his PhD, clearly, right? I want to diagnose the problem. I think we need to diagnose the problem before we can come to a solution. Yep. Good so point. let's start with the problem, okay? The problem is there was a gentleman named Matthew who played in Detroit for 12 years. And for 12 years, you never really saw significant success. No division titles, no playoff wins. And you look at the quarterback and you say, dude, you were here all this time. How did you never get over the hump? And I think that's a fair question to ask. Regardless of who I think is extremely responsible for it, I think it's a fair question. So I'm already there with you. Now here is the problem. Is that if you do a side-by-side -side in one year with LA compared to all 12 seasons, you could assemble the best roster, best coaching staff, best GM, best everything, and put it compared to this roster, this coaching staff, this front office, and it wouldn't compare. Less need, a bunch of garbage. Martin Mayhew, Bob Quinn. Sean McVay, Jim Caldwell, Daryl Bevel, <laughs> even though he was the interim, but I just want to give him some love this morning. Jim Schwartz, and of course, who can forget Matt Patricia. That is your problem. You had a Calvin Johnson. Absolutely you did. You never had a run game. Never had a defense. Outside of one season when they were actually a bit overrated, but regardless yeah, of the one point. Out of, one out of 12. For one season, you put together a roster that should have achieved, and I could make the argument, and I think it's fair to say this morning, because, again, I'm here to help diagnose a problem. In 2014, that team underachieved. 100%. And yes, they got screwed. But you know what? Matthew Stafford was on that team, and he had the ball after that, and he didn't go down the field and score. That is a fair statement to make. Mm -hmm. One season out of 12. That's For the one point. season, you had something. Oh, and the head coach wouldn't go for it on fourth and one. I forgot. Because he's reserved. And he's a people's guy. <laughs> you saw the Rams. And he's a culture man. Right. And he treats the players with respect. And he's quiet. And he's reserved. I'm Jim Caldwell. I don't know how to coach a lick of football. So the problem we have, Detroit, is that your ownership group <clears throat> has put you through absolute pain and misery, depending how old you are. 
from a time span of roughly 15 to 58 years. Right? Depends how old you are. Anywhere from 15 to 58 years, you have suffered by their inept decision making, incompetent coaching hires, incompetent friendship based team president and GM hires. You have been subjected to that. That is not your fault. That is not Matthew Stafford's fault. Yep. The, Detroit, the city of Detroit is not at fault for their football team. It's on one ownership team. One ownership group, I should say. And that's the Fords. Clearly. I'm sure you all are aware of this issue. So now that we've identified the problem, what is the solution? Well, I could make the argument that in the one season under Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell, and Sheila... I have seen more respectable leadership moves that I haven't seen in years past. So I'm willing to acknowledge, okay, there are things happening that are different, that are football moves that I can at least appreciate and say a step in the right direction. Now, if I can say that, you can also say that Matthew Stafford was never the problem in Detroit. And again, I'm going to, refer, I'm going to try to say this again. Yeah. I'm trying to make a breakthrough with all of you. Especially for the people in the back. Say it slowly. Yeah. And clearly. Matthew Stafford. Excuse me. Did I, didn't I fix how we address him now? Super Bowl champion Matthew effing Stafford. Oh, thanks for not swearing. He was not the problem in Detroit. Fair? Very One fair. more time. A little slower. Super Bowl <laughs> champion. <gasps> Super Bowl. Matthew <gasps> effing Stafford. <laughs> he won it? Oh, my God. Fish, shut the hell up. He was not the problem in Detroit. No. Case closed. You're Put back. the book on the shelf. Oh, you wish. I'll never have to talk about this again in you my life. You wish. Over and done with. He was not the problem. Accept it. Move on. And not only was he not the problem, all of you, Matthew Stafford was in vintage form last night. Yeah, he was in vintage form winning a Super Bowl. You're damn right he was. Wow, he threw two interceptions. Tom Brady's won Super Bowls throwing two interceptions. I can find you great quarterbacks that have won Super Bowls throwing interceptions. It's part of playing the quarterback position. I never understood this argument. I can't believe it, so I'm going to help you remove this sin from your mouths. Okay? Say it with me. I, X, whatever your name is, because I'm addressing <laughs> all of you. Oh, did you I, John to Doe, this? Jane Doe, doesn't matter who you are, will never repeat the following. Say it with me. Matthew Stafford is a stat pattern. Matthew Stafford can't win the big games. Matthew Stafford can't lead teams to greatness. Matthew Stafford can't overcome adversity. Matthew Stafford, all he does is throw interceptions. Those are things that are removed from your mouth moving forward. Done. Case closed. Never want to hear it again. And again, this is a therapy session. You need to, you need to take a step forward. And you know what? Sometimes we need to take a step back. Hell, we need to take two steps back to take the right step forward in our lives. Now, am I going to prescribe you with some Tylenol, Motrin, <gasps> Oxy, uh, Oxy? No, no, I can't do that. <laughs> you need a script for that. <laughs> I can't do that. But what I can do is help you come to the realization that, you know what, you were wrong. It's okay to be wrong. It happens. I'm wrong. It happens. It's part of life. Nobody's perfect. Okay, you see where I'm going with this? Retract your Matthew Stafford comments, and if you refuse to, again, this therapy session is free. <laughs> it's totally free. I'm not charging a dime. Jeff is get loving this right now. I'm not charging a single penny for this. All free. Retract your Matthew Stafford comments. If you don't, and if you won't, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go to any Ford dealership. I want you to grab one of their new car pamphlets. I want you to grab three of them. Okay? I want you to attach those little pins. Five pins in each one. I want you to crumble them up. And I want you to shove them up your ass. You and the Fords can do it. 
You, Martha, William, they can all shove them straight up your ass. That's my solution for all of you who refuse to admit you were wrong about Matthew Stafford. Oh, excuse me that I, miss, I misspoke again. Super Bowl champion Matthew Effing Stafford. How dare you. And that's it for today's therapy session. <laughs> Eight minutes. I didn't charge you a single penny. I am a humanitarian. Boy, do I care about people. Oh, you so do. <laughs> Jeff, repeat after me. <clears throat> I. I. Jane Doe. You. Jane Doe. Or John Doe. Or John Doe. All right, we're not. Will never. <laughs> will never. Say the following. Say the following. Matthew Stafford is not a clutch quarterback. Matthew Stafford is not a clutch quarterback. I will not say. I will not say. Matthew Stafford is a stat patter. Matthew Stafford is a stat patter. I will not say. Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford. Is a turnover machine. Is. Or all he does is throw interceptions. How can he be great? From now on, how you will right, address it's, him. It's too much now. No, oh, I know. I got you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back. <laughs> you, I'm going to go back to slow Don't worry. I got you, Jeff. Now, here we go. Back on track. Repeat after me. <laughs> I, moving forward. <laughs> moving forward. I will address. Adam says. Moving forward. Yep. I will address Matthew Stafford as Super Bowl champion. <laughs> there you go. Matthew yes. Effing Stafford. Mm -hmm. I will address him as yeah. division. Oh, excuse me. NFC West division champion, Matthew Stafford. 4-0 in the playoffs outside of Detroit record, Matthew Stafford. Nine touchdowns yep. in this postseason, Matthew Stafford. With three rushing touchdowns, I believe. That Matthew Stafford. Yep. 70% completion percentage in the postseason, Matthew Stafford. Three game-winning drives in the divisional NFC title game and the Super Bowl, Matthew Stafford. Jeff? Mm. I love it. <clears throat> I love it. And you know what I love even more? That people still have the decency to talk about. Why don't we, and I want to address this because I've seen people talk about it on Twitter. Um, why didn't you guys back Sue when he went to the Super Bowl? This is, the fact that people actually believe that these are the same situations blows my mind. Because with Matthew, you had a guy who was your quarterback for 12 years. Not only that, he was your best franchise quarterback in, in Detroit Lions history. Did, and not only Sue that. did leave after one contract? There you go. And take 100 mil in Miami? So uh, everybody's... On. Pulling the Sue, pulling the, uh, be happy for Ashawn Robinson. He won a Super Bowl. No, guys. I'm sorry. That argument's not going to, it's just not going to fly today. Because right now, you're giving flowers to a guy who solidified himself as a Hall of Famer in Matthew Stafford. And if you want to bring up interceptions in the Super Bowl, you're, you're pulling at strings at this point. Um, you really got nothing left to hold on to. Because at the, at the end of the day, the fact that Matthew did what he did, 4-0 in the playoffs, and not only that, they needed him in every fourth quarter except for the Arizona game, and he came up and showed up. And you guys seem to forget that and want to pull to the refs, want to pull to other excuses. Well, what about the super team that they had last night? Oh, yeah. The, the, hmm. You know what I read on Twitter as well? <laughs> Name a quarterback who hasn't won with that many Hall of Famers. Oh, my God. Well, an aging Hall of Famer who, yeah. and Von Miller, okay. If you're watching the game. And, Odell Beckham is not a Hall of Fame wide receiver yet. Neither mm -hmm. is Cooper Cup. Mm -hmm. They still have, well, especially Cooper Cup. He needs probably three four more 12, 13, 1400 yard seasons before he probably gets in. And can we contradict that by saying, well, he had no Tyler Higbee, didn't have a second string tight end, didn't, didn't have, have Odell, a run game. didn't have Robert Woods, didn't have a run game. Lost and Odell back Jim Ramsey game. was getting torched. And they Van still... Jefferson didn't know how to play football. What, what Stenard, else? What he, had else? A, he had a wide receiver from Notre Dame drop a ball right into the Bengals defenders' hands. That but they don't nice. want to talk about that. It, it goes uh, back. It's not convenient. Yeah. It's not it's convenient. Not. And the refs the refs won them that game, even though the OPI call clearly changed the whole Yeah, like I mean So uh, you're gonna fine. say the refs won that game, but you're not gonna give him credit against Tampa Bay when he when he came back with thirty seconds left and won the game for him. And especially in the game game winning drive, fifteen play drive, no run game, had to earn it the entire way down the field, ended up scoring a, a touchdown at the very end, and people still want to sit here and say, Well, the refs Stole the game. And that's the frustrating thing about yesterday's game is, you know, the Bengals' defense really showed that they were legit and that they were the X factor all postseason, really. Yeah. I mean, Joe Burrow did a great job. Don't get me wrong. I'm not discrediting Joe. Yeah, he Joe, overcame but, a lot. I yeah. mean, that defense was legit. Eli Apple got burned, obviously, yeah. late, and he's getting roasted all over Twitter this mm -hmm. morning. But yep. that's not the point. I thought it was a great football game. I thought each team deserved to win in their own right. But unfortunately, and you can't disregard this, you want to talk about all the flags. 
Joe Burrow had a minute 25 and two timeouts to get his team in field goal range. I even tweeted. I'm like, beware. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, he a had a minute chance. 25 and two timeouts. Matthew Stafford had one timeout, 40 seconds, took a sack on the first play against the Buccaneers, and then took his team down the field and won the game. I don't want to hear it. A minute 25, two timeouts. He didn't make the plays. You had the ball in your hands, Cincinnati. The same way Matthew Stafford had the ball against Dallas after, the, uh, uh, after Dallas went up in the game after that horrible defensive non-call. We all remember it. You had an opportunity. You didn't seize the moment. The Rams did. They are Super Bowl champions. Shut up. Maddie. we got to go to break. When we get back, I'm really excited for this. I mean, yesterday was a legacy-defining night for a handful of people, not just players, coaches, GMs, and not just on the Ram side, on the Cincinnati Bengals sideline as well. I'm ready for it, Maddie. I'm also ready for it, but before we go, we do need to hear about Jeff's favorite drink. He's drinking one right now, mm. Cintron. You know what? I'm enjoying a Cintron with my cigar this morning, and what a day to drink Cintron. A very celebratory day. And Cintron, let me let you in, because Cintron World is an aspirational lifestyle beverage brand with a line of sparkling flavor and energy beverages, premium bottled water, and revitalizer shots. Cintron is the official energy drink of the Red Wings, proud partners with the Detroit Pistons, and exclusively served at Little Caesars Arena. If you are looking for premium ingredients, long-lasting energy, balanced hydration, essential vitamins, Vitamins and great taste, Cintron is your top choice. Buy online at CintronWorld.com, use the promo code REDWINGS10, and you'll save 10% with shipping included. Remember, drink it, live it with Cintron. Hi, my diamonds. It's Crystal with an X. You want to get hot and perfect like me? Here's my super easy routine. <laughs> drink at least a gallon of water before you wake up. <laughs> Attach a weight to everything in your house. Hello? Sell your car and just sprint everywhere. <laughs> Scream when you exhale. Yeah! Don't follow Crystal with an X. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness with tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel anytime. Live from Woodward Avenue, that's why we're called Woodward Sports. Detroit's Radio Sports Network. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us on the Morning Woodward Show here on the Woodward Sports Network. We love the Super Bowl. It was a great, fantastic game. And there were quite some legacies to find on Sunday. Jeff, can you start us off? Yeah, well, number one, we'll start with the guy we're talking about. We'll just get that out the way. Um, we talked about what happened if you didn't win the Super Bowl. I still thought he was a Super Bowl caliber, uh, not uh, Super Bowl, Hall of Fame caliber quarterback. He won it. And he solidified himself. We all knew Matthew his whole career. He had I'm the sorry, statistic. you addressed him wrong. I'm going to need you to start over. Super Bowl champion, Matthew Thank Stafford. Um, everybody knew he put up stats. That was never the question. It was, can he produce success in the postseason? And he did it. First season with L.A., 4-0, um, nine touchdowns, what, three interceptions, and a Super Bowl champion now. He solidified himself a, a spot in Canton. Now, the next person, I think, there's a lot of people, I think, on the Rams especially. Aaron Donald goes down as officially. I mean, he already was one of the best, if not the best defensive tackle to ever play. But now, Super Bowl champion solidifies his legacy. And it's going to be interesting to see what he does in the postseason or in the, in the offseason. If he retires, he retires, hangs it up. Hangs it up as still one of the greatest defensive players of all time, most dominant. Um, I mean, you could look at guys like Jalen Ramsey. I think he solidified himself. I don't know if Odell is a Hall of Fame caliber player, but he's definitely solidified his legacy. He's been, he's been hooking for a championship for a very long time. And Odell, everyone counted him out. I mean, I sat up here and said, if you gave Odell the right situation, he will succeed. And he did just that in L.A. So I think a lot of people solidified their legacies, but the, the most important ones to me, Aaron Donald, Sean McVay, Matthew Stafford, those three right there. And Sean McVay becomes one of the youngest head coaches to, to win a Super Bowl, solidifies his legacy, because we've all known for years, I mean, play calling didn't do a very good job in the Super Bowl, but just in general, I mean, Sean McVay is one of the best head coaches in the league. He started, you know, the Sean McVay effect, the starting of the hiring of young head coaches, and you saw just that. Uh, Sean McVay finally gets a Super Bowl. For a second there, I was a little worried. Um, the Bengals looked very good up until the very end, and you know what? Sean McVay, Matthew Stafford, Aaron Donald, I think the really three Rams guys all solidified their legacy. If Joe Burrow would have won, it would have been a very interesting story. But second year, the Bengals 
they're proud of the year they had. They're pissed they they lost the Super Bowl. But at the end of the day, man, like the Bengals are going to be back here. Um, the Rams needed it more, and for legacy purposes, they deserve it. So three guys, multiple guys on the Rams that improved their legacy. Well, let's talk about legacy. Mm-hmm. All right, Aaron Donald is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, defensive player in NFL history. Yep, and he's only played eight seasons. In eight seasons, he has ninety-eight and a half sacks, seven straight All-Pro appearance or i should say nominations is the correct term three-time defensive player of the year and now the icing on the cake to a fantastic career super bowl champion he can retire today and will be regarded as a top three top five defensive player of all time minimum minimum unbelievable congratulations to aaron donald and if you walk away from the game i would be very happy for you on to the next guy, Sean McVay. Sean McVay, five seasons with the LA Rams, five winning seasons, a 55 and 26 record, one of, if not the best records in NFL history in terms of win percentage. He is seven and three in the postseason. Let me put that into context for you. He wins playoff games 70% of the time. He is a two time NFC champion. And now a Super Bowl champion, all at the young age of 36 years old. May I add to that, he is the youngest coach in NFL history to win the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Sean McVay, already a Hall of Fame head coach. He could walk away from the game today. And now we get to, obviously, the man of the hour, Matthew Stafford. 49,995 yards passing in 13 seasons, 323 touchdowns. And then, you know, his career is still being defined. Where you'll put him into the, you know, rankings of quarterbacks top 15, top 10, top 5. I mean, I think it's irresponsible to give a number given he still has years left. But he's entered the top 15 category, I think. Minimum. Why? Because he has a story and a narrative nobody has. Eli Manning had the Giants and Coughlin. Ben Roethlisberger had... The Steelers and Tomlin, I think he's better than both of those quarterbacks. One season removed from the Detroit Lions, this is his resume. NFC West Division champion, 4-0 in the playoffs, three game winning drives, NFC champion, Super Bowl champion. One season removed from, we can all agree, the worst franchise in NFL history. With the fewest playoff wins since, what, 50... 66, I believe, was the day. 67. The fewest playoff wins. The Texans have more. Expansion teams have more playoff wins than the Lions. He has a narrative nobody has in the NFL. And his legacy was defined last night. It was molded, and he is a lock. He is a... Let me, rephrase, let me say this again. He is a lock. A lock, along with Sean McVay and Aaron Donald as first ballot Hall of Famers. That is not an overreaction Monday. No. That is a fact. Fact. That is his legacy. And you know what? Tell you guys talk about Drew Brees being a top six, top seven quarterback. Aaron Rodgers, top seven, top eight quarterback. He has just as many Super Bowls as them now. Now, does he have the MVPs that Aaron Rodgers has? No, but neither Drew, Drew Brees doesn't have any. And Matthew Stafford, if he continues along at this pace, will break Drew Brees' records. Will break Tom Brady's yeah. records. Still got a good five years left. Oh, yeah. He win, he He's got another 20, 22,000 yards, 23,000 yards left in him. Yep. If he, cho- <clears throat> if he chooses to stay in the league for five more years, six more years. Minimum. He's got another two, 250 touchdown passes, potentially. Maybe not 250. That's a bit much. Let's say 200, I think, is a good number to put on the table. So he'll join the 500 touchdown club. That's the first ballot Hall of Famer. But I know, I know what you'll tell me at his induction speech. Well, Adam, he threw interceptions. Yeah. Yeah, what about Aaron Rodgers, pretty boy, who has the great passer rating, who, do, who throws the ball away, never throws interceptions. Where's he? He's been at home watching the Super Bowl 16 of his 17 years he's been in the NFL. At least Stafford's trying to make plays, trying to make things happen. I have no problem with it. Legacies were defined. Von Miller, you know... I saw some irresponsible tweets, so I just want to address them real quick. Von Miller was already a Hall of Famer before tonight. 
or excuse me yeah, last MVP, night. MVP, like the guy has a resume. He was already a Hall of Famer. That was never in yes. doubt. Andrew Whitworth, OBJ. Those guys. Eric Weddle, they are not Hall of Famers. Andrew Whitworth, I, you know what? I think I could make the case yeah. for him. Second ballot. He, he's not a first ballot Hall of Famer, but I think second, third ballot, he'll likely eventually get in. But Eric Weddle, no. OBJ no. still needs two, three more 13, 1,400-yard seasons if he wants to be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, that's the reality. Sorry. Cooper Cup has an Offensive Player of the Year and a Super Bowl MVP. So if he has, I don't know, maybe three more 12, 13, 1400 yard seasons, he'll probably get yeah, it. book it, yeah. Maybe not first ballot, but he'll get in eventually. But yeah, Eric Waddle, Eric Waddle, no. No. And Von Miller was never in doubt. He was already a Hall of Famer before he joined the Rams. Whew. <laughs> Let's switch to the other team. The Cincinnati Bengals. Legacies were defined. Joe Burrow becomes the youngest quarterback, or excuse me, the first quarterback in NFL history, drafted number one overall to get his team to both the AFC or any conference title game, for that matter, or this, let alone the Super Bowl. He's done it in his second season. He barely played his first. He got injured. Jamar Chase showed up last night. T. Higgins showed up. They are going to be back. And look, there's a very, very special quote um, that I think is fitting for this morning. And it's by Jay-Z. And the quote is, I know this game has valleys and peaks, expectations for dips, and for participate, or excuse me, per, uh, for per, uh, my voice is going out. For precipitation, we stack chips. Hardly. Mm. <clears throat> the point of that is along the journey, you're going to hit the mountaintop and you're going to fall along the way. It's a journey, ups and downs. And for Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Zach Taylor, yesterday was just along the road to getting to the, to the peak. He got pushed back down a little bit. And that'll be their motivation going into next year, Jeff. How do you feel about the uh, Cincinnati Bengals? Oh, I'm. I, if you're any Bengals fans out there, not only that, but within the organization, if we talk about the Bengals and we discuss that, all they need to do is address that offensive line, man. I don't give a damn if they dress, they they draft offensive line linemen all seven rounds. I could care less if they fix that offensive line. They have enough talented guys on rookie contracts that they can bring back. Now there are some free agents for the Bengals and do address the you know Eli Apple, which I don't know how much eager they're going to be able to bring him back, uh, considering how he looked in the Super Bowl. But Jesse Bates, they have um, they have Trey Flowers, cornerback. Um, they have other guys that are going to be coming up for free agency. So it's about keeping those guys, finding a way to keep those guys. And drive, finding an offensive line. Like, if Joe Burrow had any time to throw, who knows what kind of success he would have in this league. I mean, you, you saw what he had to overcome. I talked about it already. The third most sacked quarterback in NFL history in terms of the complete season, regular and postseason. And he still took them to the Super Bowl. Imagine if he had protection. Imagine if he had time to throw the football. He probably would have, honestly, in the future, he's a Super Bowl champion, I believe. Joe Burrow's too damn good. And if they can, they have to capitalize right now. They have... Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Joe Burrow on rookie deals right now. So if the further, the quickest, the quicker they can address the offensive line, um, the sooner they'll be back in this position, be able to win the Super Bowl. So I have no doubts, man. I mean, we're sitting up here talking about Matthew Stafford, but if the Bengals won yesterday, no one would be surprised. Like they're a very good football team. There's a reason why they're here, and despite overcoming offensive line issues, an offensive line that you know held up for for some parts of that of that game late in the fourth quarter, they obviously broke down, but. It is what it is. I don't think any Bengals fan or, or anybody in that organization, other than losing the Super Bowl, is upset about the future. Like, they have a lot more to overcome and get an offensive line, and we'll see where the Bengals are next year. I think they'll be right back in a similar position. Well, I, uh, I, I'm going to extend another olive branch this morning because I am a gentleman. And not only am I a gentleman, but in this room, I am a therapist. <coughs> <laughs> I will be opening up the phone lines for everybody to call in. Matthew Stafford, supporter, hater, I don't care. Feel free to call in. Jeff will put the number in the chat. 313-552-6322. Give me your opinions on the game. Matthew Stafford's legacy. Anything we've discussed so far, feel free to call in. 
We're going to take a break because I'm ready to die. <laughs> and when we get back, we're going to dive into this football game. Quarter one to quarter four, penalties, non-penalties, doesn't matter. I thought it was a well-clean, officiated football game. Mm -hmm. I thought they did a great job letting everything go. Yeah. But you know what? When you make that egregious of an OPI call, and they don't... I think you're ignorant not to expect a flag or two to be thrown on that final drive for the Rams, especially if it was at least worth a call. Now, can you say, well, it wasn't that egregious? Fine. But when you mess up a call like they did, you can't tell me makeup calls don't happen in the NFL. You're ignorant if you don't think that. And may I remind you, again, the refs didn't lose either team the game. And they didn't win either team the no. game. You know why? Because Joe Burrow had the ball with a minute 25 and two timeouts. That is like 15 minutes in today's well, don't NFL. don't give away everything you're going to talk about. Oh, that ain't. No, I have. No, I got oh, pages, I know you honey. have plenty. I got pages. I know you have plenty. Yeah, don't worry. We already had a therapy session, so you're ready to go. The zen is gone. But when we come back, we're going to talk about the Super Bowl yesterday. But first, we need to hear about Guardian Alarm. Well, listen, guys. You talk about that defense by the Rams. And my God, the only defense I know that can compete with them would be Guardian Alarm. Because Guardian Alarm, they get it. Good defense on and off the field that helps you feel secure. Not only that, Guardian Alarm has state-of-the-art technology that helps you feel safe, all with 24-7 local monitoring. Guardian Alarm also has convenient features that let you check in on your home, control lights and temperatures, detect smoke or carbon monoxide. It will even let you lock and unlock your doors. Call 800-STAY-OUT stay out out. today. You heard fish. That's 800-STAY-OUT. Stay, stay the out. hell out. Guardian Alarm has been trusted for over 90 years at keeping families safe. Everything that we've hoped for finally He's going deep right side. Oh, that is Edwards out there. He goes up in the air at the goal line. Hey, it's Greg Edwards here wanting to welcome the sports marketing agency to Woolworth Sports Network to the family. Glad to have you guys. For the last decade, the sports marketing agency has literally leveraged athletes around issues such as mental health and substance abuse. Opinions are like ear holes, and we're putting ours in yours. Well, that's dog winning, Joy! It's Reward Sports. What's the over under? Should I tease? Who is the lock of the night? Make sure you're watching Woodward Bets to get the latest in sports betting and more. Woodward Bets daily on Woodward Sports. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us here on the Morning Woodward Show on the Woodward Sports Network. Also featured on the Roar on 99.1, 93.5, and 94.7 HD2. Calls. Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's start take fish, some send calls. our beautiful first guest through. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking to this oh morning? Am I on? Yes, you are, sir. How's it, how are you doing? I'm Big doing great, man. Woodward. What's your name, right bud? My name's Anthony Corrado, uh, born in Detroit, Michigan, moved to Chicago, rat hole of the city, wish I was back in Detroit, but I'm keeping Lion Pride alive here in Chicago. That's How you doing? Oh, my God. I love the energy this morning. I love it. Absolutely. I'm up. I'm moving. Matt Stafford has a ring on the finger. That's right, baby. That's right. <laughs> Mr. Stephman! That's what I've been saying. <laughs> I love it. Anthony, I am... Oh, man, I, I love this. I absolutely love it. Absolutely. Not only does he have a ringer on the damn finger, but, boy, yep. he made the plays, Anthony, when he needed to. Got a gold jacket. And I am just... I'm really... Uh, look, uh, Anthony, uh, I hope you were tuning in earlier. I am exhausted for seven long months. And obviously it's a 12-year process being a Lions fan, but for seven months I sat up here trying to tell people that this could and would happen. And he's not yep. a bum and that yep. he is an elite quarterback and he is one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. And here we are, yep. man. Here we are. Anthony. I'm, I'm right there with you. Absolutely. Anthony, I can't thank you enough. I got to take more callers. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for calling in this morning. Would love to hear you call back anytime, but the line's always open for you. Always. Let me just say one thing. Absolutely. One thing and make one thing clear. Matt Stafford came from Detroit and he got himself a ring. So listen to me and listen to me good. The Detroit Lions raise champions. They are the father and mother of a Super Bowl <laughs> champion. And right now, this guy, right now, this guy is my hero. 
This is the dad Detroit I never had growing up. We will have a Detroit Lions Super Bowl championship. Jim. Win or lose, we are going there because you know why? We breed champions. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah brother. Let's um, go. It's a win for Stafford, it's a win for Detroit, and it's a win for Woodward Sports. See me next year, 2023, Malik Willis, Super Bowl champion! Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that is the all-time Woodward Sports phone call we've ever had. I don't think there's I'm ever... Gonna go no one's I'm ever going to top that, Anthony. I'm driving a car right now. I think I'm going to pull over. Yeah. I'm going to pass out. All I'm right, be safe, dude. Be safe. <laughs> be, be safe. Get to work safely. Anthony, thank you again. Fish, you. Fish, let's get let's get well, the next caller in. Anthony, I can't thank you enough. Oh that has God. to be one of the greatest Legendary. phone calls Woodward Sports has ever received. All right, next caller. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking to this morning? Good morning. This is Fred. How are you doing? Good, Fred. How are you? How was Welcome, your uh, Super Bowl evening? I hope you enjoyed some chicken wings, uh, some mozzarella sticks. I'm not what. I'm not sure. What uh, you're... I'm, unfortunately, I'm a truck driver, so I spent uh, the evening in uh, Monroe at the Loves Their Truck Stop watching the game. And I'm a 30 year plus Packer fan, and I found myself obviously rooting for Stafford. I live in Michigan, but I've always felt sad for him because he's an awesome quarterback, and I've always rooted for him. I think he's always deserved it and I knew when he got traded it was his year I just felt it I knew my Packers didn't have it that they just they they don't they keep just dropping the ball they never have a solid run game the defense is always hit and miss but with with Stafford winning the Super Bowl I do have to agree with you Adam about it does change his narrative to where and I hate to say it because I'm a hardcore Packer fan it does make it to where he is in a discussion with Hall of Famer Aaron Rodgers. Yes, sir. Yeah, and, and that's not a, look, I, I don't want people to, especially Packers fan, that's not a knock on Aaron. Aaron's got a multiple divisions, four MVPs. I yeah, mean, he's one he of the most. Choke in, he, he does he does choke. Absolutely. Though, do and I think I that is the know, frustrating thing. Is. And as a Detroit Lions supporter, you know, from our perspective, if I may address as every Lions fan for a few moments, Watching the Packers win the division all the time. Watching you guys be in the home playoff games. Hosting NFC title games. I mean, that is what any NFL team and fan base would want. But I think I can understand your frustration because, hey, we have one of the best. And you're telling me we could only get to one Super Bowl? I definitely understand the frustration, yeah, Fred. How many, time, how many times have us Packers have blown it with, with uh, home field advantage mm -hmm. in the you know, spoken frozen tundra i don't think that stupid argument that we make the frozen tundra really comes into play anymore because how many times did that 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 uh suspicion got just blown out the window the first time it ever got beat with us was uh the falcons coming in a southern team that plays in a dome came up there and beat us with mike vick i mean that's when it started going hmm i wonder is this really true can they really be beat on lambo yes we can Absolutely, Fred. Thank you so much for the call. Uh, I appreciate your your perspective, really, from an NFC division rival. I, I love that. Thank you so much. I appreciate you joining us on the morning show, Fish. I, I, I will see this. Oh, Detroit Fish, Lions cut him off. To start coming up and making it more competitive. They, I really yep. do. I mm -hmm. really do. I want them to be great. Yeah, we'll see what they're going to do. It's going to be a Fred. big off season for them. Obviously, you guys have a lot of de uh, decisions ahead of you. Are you going to re basically go all in and mortgage your future? I think you probably are going to do it. But you know, who's who knows? Again, the Super Bowl is the payoff. You want to get. You want to at least get back there. You know, I don't think you guys would be frustrated if you get to the Super Bowl and you lose a 27-24 game because, you know, oh, the other team had the ball to end the game. Like, I, I just, one Super Bowl appearance for Aaron Rodgers, for me, tells a different story of a guy who I think is obviously exceptional, but God, you can't, can't just get to one Super Bowl and you want to be mentioned with the Montanas, the Bradys, the Paytons. It's, it's tough. I agree. All right, Fred, thank you so much. You have a great morning. Fish, could you send our next... General, gentleman, woman, friend through. I'm not sure who. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking to this morning? What's up? What's going on? What's brother? up, man? What's your name? What's up? This is Dyson, man. Detroit Dyson, man. Detroit I'm, Dyson, I'm, man. I'm How home, are you, buddy? You know what I'm saying? Uh, good, Adam, man. It's good to see y'all. I gave you a like, man. You know oh, what I'm hell saying? Yeah. It's got a lot of haters online. You know what I mean? <laughs> but hey. con congratulations to the homie. You know what I mean? And I, I agree with the other caller. We did raise him, man. All those fourth quarter comebacks and stuff paid off. Mm -hmm. I yeah. saw that. 
Yeah, man. Okay. Look, you're but... right. This city really defined him. I, he took on that blue collar mentality. And you saw it, man. You saw it in one year in yeah, L.A. Man. He was yeah, ready for man. any situation. I just like to say this, though, Adam. I disagree with you about golf. I don't think he's a bridge quarterback. I think he'll mature here just like Matthew did. Just It wouldn't take that long, you know, because Detroit can build around him. That's what I feel. What do you think? You know what? Um, it, it's tough for me because – when I, when I when I call somebody a bridge quarterback, that definition to me is he's a guy that you can keep in the locker room for six, eight years, really, until you find that guy or you have an opportunity to take like a Joe Burrow, a Herbert, an Allen, a Stafford. But with Jared Goff, I, I do agree with you. The direction the organization is going in now, I am more confident than I've ever been in terms of them being able to build a contender. My concern will always fall back to this. Last night, you saw a quote-unquote super team fall apart, mm -hmm. injured, not play their best football, yeah. not able to establish the run, and they had a quarterback that could bail them out and a defense that could do it. Do we believe the Lions can yeah. build, one, a defense like the Rams, and two, can Jared Goff be that guy? I, I think that's a tough I mean, ask. It's a tough ask for me. I mean, they, 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 you, you just look at it. They, they, he came to the basement team. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm with you, and I don't even hold him accountable. Really and if you look at his you know, last four games, really he played Dyson. He played until, actually really well. Yeah, he, he auto. You know, he he's going for it on fourth down too. You can see that too. That's coming. You know what I mean? I believe he'll he'll mature here. That's just what I think. You know, and I'm a season ticket holder. You know, sometimes. So I'm thinking about getting my tickets again. Unbelievable. Right? You absolutely <laughs> should, man. Look, you know. Uh, if you're in a position to do that, I think you should. I'm not one of those guys that tells people to sell their tickets or not to support the team. Like, that's not a thing for me. Uh, I'll call out what I, how I see it all the time. But when it comes to supporting your team, you support them. All right? It's not yeah. your fault you guys have had incompetent. Honesty, man. Go ahead. I appreciate your honesty, man. I appreciate you, Dyson. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for Take calling care, in. Guys. We really appreciate it. Okay. My man, have a good one. Fish, do we have anybody else on the lines? Yes, we do. All right. Let's see. What time is it? 9, 10. We'll take one more caller, then we'll go to break. And if there are more, we'll continue it on. Who do we have the luxury and the pleasure of speaking to this morning? Hello. 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 How are you? What's your name? DJ, man. I be here all the time. Hey, hey DJ. Hell. Is it DJ in the chat? <laughs> yes, sir. My man, how That's are you, man? Here. How was your Super Bowl Sunday? It was okay. I won money off the clown. So I, just, <laughs> I, I just could I, I had to, I had I knew I had to set it up where I could watch this pathetic thing going on. Here. <laughs> I'll I tell you what. Up, I knew it was coming. I'll tell you what, DJ. I'll tell you what. You know what? I was extremely invested into that game. I, I put a lot of money. I mean, money where my wife probably would make me sleep on wow. the couch if they lost. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie hey. to you. During the game, it, I totally forgot I bet money. Yeah, so when right. Steph, no, I swear to God, I swear to God, hear me out. Like they won the game, I was you know I was celebrating, I was happy. You guys obviously saw my my post that I wow. put on when they scored later on Twitter. Like I was going off, and then like my cousin like shrugs my shoulder. He's like, dude, you like you put a, you put a lot of money on the game. I'm like, oh, sh we're rich. Let's go. You know, so I started celebrating again. <laughs> but listen, listen, guys, listen, guys. I got to be honest, though. This is really pathetic, okay? All right, talk to us. What's up? I won money. I won money. The Super Bowl was boring, okay, first and foremost. I won money. So I'm telling you, I'm looking at this the whole thing. I, I looked at it. I was like, man, this is a real – I yawned a few times. I was like, man, this is a real boring Super Bowl. Guys are going back, man, maybe it was a defensive thing. And maybe it's part, partially that I'm a little bitter over Stafford. I got that. Yeah. But my thing is this. How did you feel when Matthew Stafford was here? Because a lot of these guys who call him people haters wasn't like this when he was here. Yeah. It was very. You're right. You're right. And I think it's fair, DJ. I think it's fair to look back at Matthew's 12 seasons in Detroit and say, it was underwhelming. It was an underachievement. And it's Thank not just you. on him, though. I, I think it's fair to say it was an underachievement. You had the guy in the door, clearly, for 12 years. You didn't do anything with him. And that's really they an indictment on the front Sue. office. But, see, that's the thing. That's where I'm getting at. When Sue went to, to Tampa Bay, 
they was about to go to the Super Bowl. Nobody was backing him. Yeah, like but DJ, he's he's DJ, he's a he's a defensive tackle. I don't mean disrespect to Sue. I loved what? him when he was here. But he left after the first contract. He took the money in Miami, yeah. and then he went to Tampa Bay. Everyone had forgotten uh, about Sue by the time he went to Tampa Bay. I think we should have kept Sue what we should have did. 100%. The Lions, and we should have kept Sue, got rid of Stafford. But see, I think if we would have got rid of Stafford, and, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, if we would have got rid of Stafford early, yeah, well, well, let me finish. If we would have got rid of Stafford early and would have kept Sue, Stafford wouldn't have had no Super Bowl. Because, see, back then, he would have had to still prove himself, and he wasn't that good. Okay? That's where I'm driving at. Because uh, it's like... I'll agree a bit and disagree, if, if I may, DJ. So I'm going to disagree okay. on, on... I don't We're think he delivers... The, the what if on a Super Bowl, I think it's tough for me to kind of like think how his career would have shaped had we what traded him released him let him go in free agency like that is too much i don't know what would have happened how it would have reshaped the yeah. league where he would have gone but what i will say though is his first six seasons in detroit his first six full seasons because the first two he didn't play he was basically hurt all the time he had a 500 record he made the playoffs three times he had averaged 28 touchdowns a season and just over 11 interceptions like he was borderline elite, yeah. if not elite. Like, he was playing at a good hey, level. One more thing. One more thing. Yeah, your show, go for it. And I got to go. And I know you guys got a lot of callers. But here's another thing. Andre Drummond. When Andre Drummond left, <sighs> nobody backed him like this. Oh, DJ, and DJ. I, I, somebody, I, have somebody, I love you. Somebody in the I love you. You don't want to know my opinion on now. Andre Drummond. I have a bat. It's in a, it's in a showcase at home. I, I have... Three bats at home. One reserved for Jeremy Grant, one for Russell Westbrook, and the other for Andre Drummond. Oh, I think man. Drummond's okay. a bum. We'll catch, we'll, catch, we'll catch back up on that. My man. Hey, call in any time, DJ. I appreciate you always DJ, being in we the need chat. You back. I always see you every morning, man. Need, You're a real one. Yeah, we need DJ back. Peace. Peace out. All right, we're going to go to break. When do we get back? We'll take more callers. Fish, you're doing a great job, buddy. Maddie, what do we got to do? We got to talk about Gypsy Vodka. <clears throat> Guys, Gypsy Vodka, let me tell you. If I didn't have to work till 7, 8 o'clock today, I would be hungover as hell. <laughs> but having said that, for, forget my personal bias towards Gypsy Vodka. Gypsy is not only a gr gluten-free vodka, I believe, and it is believed by many, they are the best and smoothest tasting vodka on the market. Guys, they're locally lo owned and operated in Petoskey, Michigan. Give them a try. Ask for it by the name of Gypsy, and as always, please drink responsibly. Hi, I'm Kay Cunningham. I'm proud to partner with Hall Financial, the mortgage company known for five-star service. Don't just take my word for it. Check out their 5,000 five-star reviews for yourself. Go to callhawfirst.com and get started with your five-star experience today. You don't have to go to the beach, man. You don't have to get your butt crack full of sand. You just need the little chili peppers, man, to get that glowing beach chili peppers. Man. Monday, February 21st from 11 to 1 p.m. Join Woodward Sports and Big D Energy for the grand opening of the Berkeley Chili Peppers tanning on Woodward between 11 and 12 mile. Come hang and join the Pepper Club. Best deals on unlimited tanning. You just need a little chili peppers, man. Adam and Jeff have great hair. Their sports opinions are pretty good, too. That's why it's all felt to you, ding ding. MWS Live on Woodward Sports. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us on the Morning Woodward Show here on the Woodward Sports Network. We've got some more callers joining us. Fish, bring out the next one. All right. Who do we have the pleasure of speaking to this morning? Welcome to the Morning Woodward Show. Can I get a name? Kyle. Kyle, how are you doing, buddy? How's, how was your Super Bowl weekend? Uh, uh, it was great. I was down here in Florida. You guys are my connection uh, back up to the Detroit sports. Hell Let's yeah. go. Hell yeah. That's awesome. So my opinion is if Stafford didn't make it or win a Super Bowl in his first year, I think Detroit would be less and less supportive of him. Uh, I think that's fair. I, I think they would have kind of like the, the story would have died. I think year one, the hype was always going to be at its highest. Right, Kyle? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, I, I think, I think uh, I mean, Stafford's my boy. I've been arguing down here. Uh, everybody's a Tampa fan, and I've been arguing <laughs> for years. That he's a uh, that he's a Hall of Fame quarterback, and I think this uh, solidifies at least a uh, second ballot Hall of Fame. Oh, absolutely. I mean, me personally, again, maybe I'm biased, but I think he's the first ballot Hall of Famer, given he's going to have sixty thousand plus yards, four hundred plus touchdowns. I mean, he's going to have the numbers to back it up. 
the fact that he's 4-0 yeah, in, the, in the playoffs without the Detroit Lions. And he won this year in dramatic fashion. His last three playoff wins, the divisional round, the NFC title game, and the Super Bowl win, have all resulted in fourth quarter comebacks along with game-winning drives. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I agree. Uh, in my opinion, I think Dre, Dre Bly should be our new quarterback coach, our, our new uh, DB's coach. Okay. I think uh, the narrative with Detroit sports is if we bring back great players from the past, I think we're going to be uh, the next uh, Champa Bay. Uh, I'd, say, I'd say four years. I wouldn't I hate it. Look, I, I, yeah, I'm with you on the timeline. I don't think this team is ready to compete yet for a Super Bowl. I have questions about the quarterback. Uh, I mean, the roster, you really need to see what Brad Holmes is going to do. He needs time. They they really do. But I do think next year, Kyle, and I want your opinion on this, I think with the schedule they have in front of them, I don't think it's irresponsible to say they could max out and win 10 games. Yeah, I, I, I see them making, uh, if at best, I see with with golf, I see we making uh, the wild card. I could see that. And then I think the narrative with uh, – with our division is we're back to one of the top divisions in the NFL, um, especially if Aaron Rodgers stays and we can, uh, we can win at least one of those um, and we can beat some, you know, pretty good teams. Uh, I think, you know, I think we have a argument to be one of the top teams, in the, you know, at least mid, mid NFL uh, ranking. Yeah. But I, I, don't I don't think, think it's, so, uh, I don't think it was called uh, what uh, that kid out of Liberty, uh, the quarterback Malik Liberty. Willis. I yep. yep. I don't think we touch him. I think it should be uh, like Geno Smith. I think it should come around in the second uh, round if we're going to pick him. Yeah, we'll have to because, see how the board plays out. I don't think you take him at two. That's just my opinion. I think, uh, oh, no, excuse I'm me, I think you take an edge rusher number two, no matter what. I and, say, I say we we take we take um, <laughs> in Hutchinson or that kid out of uh, Oregon um, at two. And then we uh, come back with our late uh, first round. I think we take that um, linebacker from Georgia. Oh, I, I would love him. I, I love the linebacker out of Georgia Parker. and Utah. And I, I want your opinion on this, Kyle. I think last night, can are, are me and you at least on the same page, Kyle, that you don't take a person like Kyle Hamilton at number two <laughs> overall? Secondary players don't matter anymore. They just don't. Oh, All no, the rules no, are I stacked mean, up think, against them. I think, I think the way our defense is, I don't think – we need to, you know, go that high with with a DB because, um, I mean, he would be a, a game changer. That that there's no doubt about that. But I think that's just way too high at number two to take a take a safety unless you're getting, um, you know, solid Hall of Fame. Yeah, I'm with you. I love I love that you brought that up. I mean, it's super important when you take guys in the top two, top three. I mean, to be honest, you you have Hall of Fame expectations. That's just the reality. I'm sorry. I, I think I, I, I might be uh, the only one that has this opinion. I say we trade our um, our late our late first round this year, possibly our uh, our second round, and then maybe one the first next year, and maybe try to move up to five and pick up the the kid from Oregon if we pick up Hutchinson or vice Oof. versa. I think we have dominant uh, edge rushers. I think we could be you know I think we could be even better faster because. Um, you know, dominate defensive lines. Look at last night. Look at uh, A. What A. Robinson and Donald. Um, if they weren't in the game, I, I think I think Rams get destroyed uh, with that run game. You um, you nailed it on the money, Kyle. You pay you 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 uh, you you know you have to start doubling people. You doubling their two best receivers, and then you're leaving their you know third and fourth uh, options open. And I think you get destroyed. I think it goes uh, the over. Um, and I think it's nowhere close with uh, with what Burrow would have done uh, with you know what he had uh, available to him. Yeah, look, I I think you hit it on the money, Kyle. I really do. Thank you. I can't thank you enough for calling in. Loved your comments. Uh, loved the opinion. The Hutchinson Thibodeau. I mean, that would be a hell of a move. I don't know if I'd be willing to go that much. Uh, to be honest with you, I think if you make a move up. You probably take a quarterback if they're in love with it. I don't see them trading up for a D lineman, or, or excuse me, a D lineman. But I mean, that, I, that's a scenario no one's brought up to me. So super fascinating. Yeah, thank you, I, Kyle, for the call, man. I, yeah, take it easy, guys. Thank you very much for everything. Yeah, take thank it easy, you. man. Hopefully, uh, would love to hear your call back anytime soon. Fish, do we got one more caller? One more. All right, one more. We'll take one more caller, then we'll Hello? get the show back on the road. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> 
My name's Troy. What's up, Troy? How are yeah. you, man? Good, good. All right, I got three things uh, on it. I, I mean, I, I live in Pennsylvania, but I'm a diehard Lions fan just because Let's go. watching Sanders and that. Let's go. But, uh, you know, the, the big question is, does this reverse the curse of uh, mm. Bobby Lane? Because, you know, he didn't want to go that Detroit traded him. Stafford wanted to go, and they thought that they wouldn't let him go, but they left him go. So does this now reverse that curse? You know what, Troy? I would say yes, but I don't believe the team is cursed. I just think they're pathetically owned and ran. Or, excuse me, they've been pathetically <laughs> ran for the last 58 years. Yeah. But I think now what they have in place is a lot better than what I've seen, in my, at least in my lifetime. So uh, I don't want to not be optimistic about what they have right now. But just talking about the past, uh, I, I don't think it's a curse. Yeah. I really don't. I mean, and then, honestly, like, living here, you know, you don't get, as a Lions fan, you don't get to root for a whole lot, like anywhere. But, you know... I pulled for Sue when he was playing for for Tampa. I wanted to see him get a ring. As much as everybody's saying, "Oh, you didn't pull for him," well, yeah, I wanted to see him win. It wasn't it, it wasn't to the extent of Stafford, but I still wanted to see him win. And then the other thing, if you guys can look at on YouTube, it's PV Bears got robbed. It's our high school football team here. You guys want to talk about the refs? If you watch that play on that game. It's unbelievable. I mean, that that's the worst ref call I've ever seen. Yeah, look, w yeah. when it comes to the refs in this game, I, I didn't. They blew the call on I, offensive no, pass I, interference, I, and I'm with you. For that, sure. Uh, yeah, it, like you said, it was a makeup call. Exactly, yeah. and yeah. I and look, he held him. Now, was that call? Getting called in the first, second, third quarter? No, it wasn't. They let him play and hold and grab and fight for it all game. But you know what? The refs made a mistake, and they knew they did. And they had to make up for it, whether yep. we like it or not. And I'll always resort to this, Troy, and I want to know what you think about this. Even after that score, Joe Burrow had the ball with a minute 25, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, and Jamar Chase. Two timeouts. They didn't get it done. He did. I, I don't. I don't blame the game on the refs at all. What, what I'm saying is, I want you to look at my high school football team. Yeah. Well, can play. you uh, can you repeat it so I can search it? It's PV Bears got robbed. It's on YouTube. All right. Let's see. Basically. This. It, okay. I see it. I see it. It's actually, all right. I'm watching this. Pleasant Valley is the white in the white jersey. Oh, what? What? This is great radio listening, You're Adam. Kidding. Can you explain I, what's happening? Well, I mean, what what the hell is even that? I don't even know how yeah. to... I don't know what to say. Troy? You know what it was? You know what it was? What? The, 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 one of the officials that that were there, the PAAA, his kid plays on the other team. Of course. Aww. Of course. <laughs> that was such an obvious... What? That ain't right. And that, and, and, and that was a district playoff game. And oh. That's... That's frustrating, man. And it's district. Play Talk about conflict mm. of interest. Yep. Well, Troy, look, man, thank you so much for supporting out in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Thanks for sharing the story on the on the non call. That is, uh, <laughs> that I was shocked when I watched. That. I was not expecting something like that. Um, guys, if you want to watch it, Google P or excuse me, YouTube PV Bears. Uh, it'll be like the third or fourth video down. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Troy. Have a great one, buddy. We got to go to break. When do we get back? What's next for Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals? And also, did the referees make an impact? Or at least, I should rephrase it. Did the referees cost the Bengals or the Rams the game? Now, obviously, the Rams won, so you can kind of eliminate that narrative. But we'll talk about it still because, yeah, there was an OPI call that had significant meaning. Maddie? Uh, yeah, it's something else that has significant value. Now we need to hear about my bookie. All right, guys, my bookie. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. Football <laughs> season's coming to an end. It doesn't stop. March Madness is right around yes, the is. corner, and Let's you know hope. I'm all for it. Let me tell you, 16-1. You want to take the 16 over the 1 seed, the 15 over the 2, be my guest. Your money, your problems, not mine. But let me tell you where to do it. My bookie. Bet from anywhere, anytime, using my bookie. And sign up today using code Woodward, and they'll match you dollar for dollar. And again, as always, if you do have a gambling problem or struggle with gambling, Call 1-800-270-7117. We'll see you right after the break. 
Hi, my diamonds. It's Crystal with an X. You want to get hot and perfect like me? Here's my super easy routine. <laughs> Drink at least a gallon of water before you wake up. <laughs> Attach a weight to everything in your house. Hello? Sell your car and just sprint everywhere. <laughs> Scream when you exhale. <laughs> Don't follow Crystal with an X. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness with tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel anytime. to the normal sports blah 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 it's liquid sports welcome back thanks for joining us on the morning woodward show here on the woodward sports network this fabulous valentine's day <clears throat> the Bengals took the l yesterday matthew stafford and the rams got the win What's next for the Bengals, jeff well you if you're watching the super bowl you we knew this all year they had problems obviously defending and, and blocking for Joe Burrow. And you saw that in the Super Bowl. I mean, sacked seven times. We already mentioned it. The most sacked quarterback in regular season and postseason history, or top three. So they obviously need to fix, fix the offensive line. We know this. That's a fact. The reality is the players need to get better, of course. You have Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Joe Burrow on rookie deals. So those guys, you have a... a time limit with those guys in terms of when you have to pay them so right now is the time you you i don't care if they use all seven rounds of, of, of offensive linemen if that's what they have to do because the Bengals they had everything as a team the only thing they couldn't do and they were third worst in the nfl and, and their offensive line was at pass blocking their win rate and you saw it it got exposed in the super bowl so for them go out and protect joe burrow i think that's the number one thing you saw it kind of similarly with the chiefs last year in the super bowl how much they realized wow we really do need to protect Patrick mahomes and the Bengals are similarly having that same um theory now with the offensive line that joe burrow had he obviously still had a chance to win the game he had a, he had a minute 25 and two timeouts left but Aaron Donald making that play at the end of the game, it shows Joe Burrow, he needs protection. And not only that, what does Joe Burrow look like when he has time to throw? I mean, especially in the playoffs. I think if you address that offensive line, this is easily not only a Super Bowl quarterback, caliber quarterback, but a Super Bowl caliber team with Zach Taylor. I think they'll be right back in the conversation. The AFC East or the AFC next year, it's much more of an open conversation. I mean, we talked about the Chiefs this year, the tear they went on. You could realistically say, if the Bengals address the offensive line, no question they should be favorites next year coming out of the AFC. They're too talented. They're going to be more experienced now. Joe Burrow will be in his third NFL season, second he made it to the Super Bowl, gained a ton of experience. And the Bengals can take a whole lot from this year. The run they had, the run they went on, the de the teams they beat to get to the Super Bowl. Um, and you lost to, really, in I, my opinion, the most complete team in the NFL. And that's really what it is. The Rams are more complete on both sides of the ball. They had more playmakers. And you know what? Joe Burrow couldn't overcome it. But if they can fix the offensive line, give me the chances on the Bengals getting back exactly to the Super Bowl. Because in the AFC, I mean, you have the Chiefs. But both sides of the ball, I think the Bengals are still a better team. So they don't have a lot to fix at them. It's just really – it's addressing and, and protecting Joe Burrow, their franchise quarterback. Because you saw it last night. He got injured again. Um, don't really know the extent of the knee injury. But those things can happen. You have to protect your franchise quarterback. And if you're able to do so, Bengals will be right back in it. They could be Super Bowl champions easily. Yeah, the Bengals have a, a young core. They do. That they'll be able to build around for years to come, especially in the short interim. They're not paying Higgins, Burrow chase like, it's not a thing Bengals will be fine I'm, I'm really not worried about their future it seems like they've got the right quarterback got the, the right coach, coach. they've yeah. got it all put together I'm not worried now they just need to continue to make good decisions mm -hmm. and yeah Joe Burrow showed you he can be that guy but sorry if you actually go back and watch the title run how the Bengals became AFC champions you'd be a fool to say it was because Burrow led them there. It's actually the defense. The defense was the X factor. And that is the same defense they spent over $135 million on in the last two off seasons. That defense. That defense has delivered. And it's a credit to Joe Burrow. I mean, he made the throws he needed to make. He was a big time quarterback. Not knocking Joe Burrow here. He's yeah. great. He's and I'm elite. And I'm not gonna crap already on him elite. for having zero points in the fourth quarter. I'm not gonna sit up here and crap on well, him. Like, you know what I mean? I it's... mean the point is though. 
You had the ball with a minute 25 in the Super Bowl. Yeah, you had a chance. No one's going to remember anything. Yeah. If Matthew Stafford was down 23-20, to 20, a minute 25 and two timeouts, and the Rams didn't go down and score, he would be being butchered right now on the show, including me. And I wouldn't have a single, a single inch of sympathy or anything for him. You know why? Because you had the ball, you had the opportunity to change your narrative, and that's been the story all along, hasn't it? That's, yep. When he was traded to L.A., he had an opportunity. It wasn't a given, but he had an opportunity to change the narrative he had in Detroit. He did it. One year removed. Let's talk about the referees, Jeff. All right? Mm. Now, I thought they officiated an outstanding football game. I thought they did a great job. They let the players play. No holding penalties, no defensive pass interference, offensive pass interference, no defensive holding, no offsides. It was a great officiated game. Up until they blew the call to start the second half. And I'm sorry, refs are human. If you think they didn't look at that Megatron all the way up there, or that jumbo screen, whatever you call it. Said we effed up. And like, ah, oh, we missed that seven points. And if you thought for a second, and again, they didn't intentionally throw flags that weren't there. No, they were all he holding. He grabbed Cooper Cup? Clearly. It's a defensive holding call. Now, is it a little tit for tack? Is it kind of soft? Yeah. Well, you know what? That was always coming. And don't tell me about the Cooper Cup defensive pass interference in the end zone, clearly. That one was obvious. But the Logan Wilson hold. That, that you want to argue was soft, I will agree it was soft. That was the only one I would question. That was the makeup call right there. Yeah, that was the that only That was one. the makeup call for the offensive pass interference, whether we like it or not. Yep. The, the Cooper Cup defensive pass interference call in the end zone, that was obvious. Yeah. The guy was holding on for dear and life the, to Cooper Cup. Unnecessary Cuff. roughness, too. Like they, I mean, they both like, kind of end up coming into play. So And the Bengals, two unsportsmanlike penalties Can't do one that. from some dude running into the end zone celebrating which without i thought a uniform, was hilarious which was hilarious, <laughs> was hilarious. <laughs> to be fair now Guy was that there? game changing probably not but you know what it's kind of momentum shifting starting yeah. at the 10 compared to the 25 it is. and then Jeez. the punch thrown or really the smack i mean whatever you want to call it i mean that was a that's a drive killer yeah. not only did you not get the conversion on third down you're going back another 15 that was when yards. joe burrow was hurt so you're, you're doubling down on yeah. that i mean it was <laughs> it was it was pretty bad it, re it really was i mean Look, the refs, I thought, again, I'll reiterate it. They had a great game. I thought they officiated a very good game. They missed one big call. They made up for it. And the rest of the game, they called it clean and they called it correctly. The refs had zero impact yeah. on the final score. Because when the Rams went up, Joe Burrow had the ball with two timeouts left in a minute 25. I rest my case, Jeff. Yeah, this isn't, people forget. Like, I don't know if they, they see the Rams and they want to immediately look to when the Rams got that call against the Saints. This is not the same situation at all. Um, in terms of the moment, obviously, it's a Super Bowl. But they still had a chance. I mean, Joe Burrow had a chance at the end of the game to drive down the field. They didn't get it done. And if you want to bring up the refs in the calls they missed, clearly you weren't watching the o OPI uh, against Jalen Ramsey on T. Higgins, and they, they allowed seven points. So if you want to give up seven to the Bengals, then you're going to look at the holding call and the, the holding call by, by Wilson and say, okay, it's a trade-off. And same with the, uh, you know, the, the holding in the end zone with the Cooper Cup. Those are all clear calls, man. And the Bengals, they did it to themselves. I mean, you're, you have them in the red zone, and you gave Matthew Stafford and the Rams another opportunity. You put them back on first down multiple times with holding penalties. They beat themselves. I'm sorry. Maybe Bengals fans are the only ones that have the right to be upset because it is their team. But at the end of the day, you can't sit up here and say the refs costed them that game. This is not the Rams and Saints game two years ago where I could sit up here and maybe agree with you. It's very different circumstances. Or three years ago. This is very, I mean, it all comes down to, like Adam said, most of the game, refs are fine. And the whole game, the refs are fine. Up until that OPI, they missed. Then you could really say, okay, refs missed that call. They, they maybe got the, the Wilson call a little too much. It's a trade-off. I mean, the, the refs had really nothing to do with this. If people want to jump on top and say the refs won um, despite Stafford or whatever the case may be, then so be it, man. You're never going to convince them. Because if they, if they have the right to refuse that the refs did not put the game in anybody's hands burrow had a chance at the end of the game he didn't get it done so i don't want to hear that the refs i don't know it always goes with the refs adam if they, if they want, have nothing to explain of the game and how it happened it always falls on the refs but this time you can't do it you can't joe burrow had a time two timeouts one minute 25 seconds left he had a chance no 
All right, well, let's go to break because I want to address two things in the coming segment. Cooper Cup, did he have the single greatest season for a wide receiver in NFL history? And secondly, we'll get back to Matthew Stafford and the Super Bowl. Yeah. But I do want to go to break real quick. When we get back, we'll discuss what I just said. And then I'm going to give some extra time today for mailbag. I want everybody to be able to get in their questions. If you don't want to text it or put it in the comment section, feel free to call in. Jeff will put in the number one more time, 313-552-6322. Maddie, we got to go to break. We do have to go to break, you guys. Uh, but before we go, we need to hear about Planet Fitness. All right, guys, Planet Fitness, your home, and not only your home, our home. For all of your fitness needs. Your fitness is essential at Planet Fitness starting today. Zero down, $10 a month. Get your mental and physical health in check. They are the official studio sponsors of the Woodward Sports Network. It's a judgment-free studio, and you can work out in a judgment-free zone. Guys, check out Planet Fitness. Don't miss out. We'll see you right after the break. Fellas, football season is here. It's time to make your grooming experience easy like Sunday morning. Get to Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Walk in, relax, watch your favorite team play, and before you know it, your hair will be game ready. Get to Lady Jane's, open 10 to 8, 7 days a week. Walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. Make sure you're listening to Woodward Sports all day long. Start your morning with the Morning Woodward Show. Spend middays with Big D Energy. Watch and listen your drive home with the bottom line. And don't forget about Woodward Bets Daily. All live, all right here on the Woodward Sports Network. Ladies and gentlemen, Chili Peppers Tanning Salon is where you'll find the cleanest salons in the D. With spotless sanitized room and tra trained certified professionals, Chili Peppers Tanning Salon is where you need to get your experience. Don't forget to pick up Australian Gold Designer Skin, California Tan, and Swedish Beauty Lotions. Guys, check them out. Chili Peppers Tanning. If you're as pale and as white as me, you know you need it. It's okay? Join the club. We'll <laughs> <laughs> I knew Maddie would like that one. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. The single greatest season for a wide receiver ever. Jeff, if I may, mm -hmm. I'd like to make that case for Cooper Cup. Yeah. If you would give me a minute. I think you'd win that case. <laughs> Cooper Cup, to me, has had the single greatest season for mm -hmm. a wide receiver in NFL history. Yes, better than the Moss years, the Calvin years, the Jerry Rice years. Better than them all. You know why? He finished with the most receptions and yards in a single season, regular and postseason combined, in NFL history. He's the only receiver ever to eclipse 2,000 yards total in an entire season, including the playoffs. 22 touchdown receptions, six coming in the postseason. He was the triple crown leader, if I may remind you, in the NFL, which means he led the league in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. He did that. He was the Offensive Player of the Year, and of course the Super Bowl MVP. There is not a better singular season in NFL history than the season Cooper Cup has just had. Jeff, agree or disagree? No, uh, I agree completely. I mean, if you look at the let's say let's look at the list. All right, NFL leaders, including playoffs and receptions. I mean, let alone Cooper's the king, 170 at 170 receptions. He ended with 178 catches throughout the entirety of the season. 24, a little over 2,400 yards, 22 touchdowns. He was the triple crown winner, unanimous All-Pro, had the most catches in single postseason history, 33 catches. NFL Offensive Player in the Year. He was a Super Bowl MVP. I mean, that is one of the greatest individual seasons as a receiver ever. He's among all the top in, in statistics, of, among not only regular season but playoffs. Um, if you look at just receiving yards playoffs included he's number one number two is larry fitzgerald in 2008 with 1977 cooper cup takes the title with two three 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 i mean he's up by 300 yards on, on larry fitzgerald you're absolutely correct i mean has, by far the most accomplished can season. i ask you a question what's up has any wide receiver ever performed at this level for the entirety for the entirety of a season and delivered a Super Bowl, one MVP, nope. triple crown winner. It's not a thing. Not Jerry Rice, no. not Calvin Johnson, not Randy Moss. No, Jerry Rice had 1,965 yards, including playoffs, throughout the, when he was running out. This guy's at 2,400, 500 <laughs> more. And he only played, what, one or two games more? Yeah. I believe they had a bye week yeah, that year. I guess you could throw in the 17th game, but still. I mean, I mean it's, really. It's, I'm sorry. 2,300 yards. Cup has had the single greatest season yeah. for a wide receiver in NFL history. I'll say it one more time. Cooper Cup has had the single greatest season 
an NFL history for a wide receiver. Nobody comes close to him. Not Jerry Rice, not Calvin Johnson, nobody. Cooper freaking cup. But Stafford doesn't elevate people, though. Oh, we don't need to talk about that. I thought he doesn't. Please, I, I have a headache. Um, Jesus. <laughs> Ridiculous. Jesus what an accomplishment as a receiver. I mean, from good, that Good standpoint. for him. I'm glad he got the MVP. Honestly, I wasn't mad. I told you the four people... I would yeah. have no problem getting it Donald Robinson. Even though I thought Aaron Cup. Donald, I'm not mad. I mean, he had two touchdowns. I Cooper don't care. Cup. It was a big it's, part of that fourth quarter. So, I mean, say what you want. It's, what you it's want. not the point. Look, if Stafford had one touchdown pass and two picks, all right, maybe you have a point. Yeah. Three touchdowns. Three touchdowns. The game-winning fade route. The no-look pass over the middle. Do I have to remind you guys? Like, Money. come on. He, he played lights out. It's not even a case. And that brings me to my next point. It was never a doubt. It was never a doubt with number nine on the field. Mm -hmm. I warned every single one of you buffoons. I told you he was the best quarterback in the fourth quarter all season. I told you he was the best quarterback going into the Super Bowl in the postseason. You would not listen to me. You kept telling me, wait for the Stafford late clutch interception picks. Wait for them, Adam. They're coming. I'm still waiting, jackass. I'm still waiting. I didn't see the fourth quarter interception that, oh, turned the game on its head and they lost the game because of it. Oh, I, I saw him lead his team down and win the game with no run game, with only one wide receiver really to throw to. He had a white guy in the slot, not named Cooper Cup. The dude from Notre Dame should never play football again. Hard to pronounce his last Van name. Van Jefferson, who was too busy thinking about the birth of his child to even play football. No tight end. No tight end. Blanton was hurt. He was on the sideline. No Higby. He was done. Hopkins. That was his tight end. <laughs> Please. Please. Spare me your stupidity this morning. Please. <laughs> it was never a doubt. Did you ever doubt that it wouldn't play out this way? Honestly. Did you ever think for a second... That your narrative of this guy is a bum, he's not elite, he's going to throw the interception to cost him the game? Did you actually believe that? Or are you just that stupid? It's got to be both. Because you can't believe something like that and not be completely stupid. Or a jackass. Holy hell. I can't believe it. I can't believe people like that exist. And then they're going to come out today, well, I told you, the Rams would win the Super Bowl, I I love it. Jeff and Adam, will you guys give me your thoughts on Stafford's epic no-look throw to Cup? Three minutes left in the game. One of the most clutch throws of all time. Yeah. It was a Stafford-esque throw. I mean, It was the right... I mean, guys, I, I've been trying to... I, I'm going to stand up for this. Uh-oh. Here we go. I've been trying to tell you all season long. Okay? <laughs> I have been trying to tell you all season. I told you in the Tampa game. He drops back. He's got the safety in the middle of the field. His eyes are to the left. Drawing the safety and prolonging him from running to the sideline as long as possible. Immediately throws it yeah. down the sideline. Money to Cooper Cup. And what does he do in the Super Bowl? He sees the Mike linebacker in the middle of the field. He drops back. He sees him. He looks dead straight. And I can't remember if it was Skornick or Jefferson. But he stares right at him. Gets ready in the throwing motion and throws it right down the middle without even looking to Cooper Cup on the dime in stride. Yeah. Between a linebacker and a safety. <sighs> Guys, right through. if that's not elite for you, if that's not special, I've got two words. Suck it. Mm -hmm. Because that's elite. That is special. Jeff, yeah. what'd you make of the throw? Oh, exactly what you just said. And the ability for him to move the safety with his eyes. He's been doing it throughout the playoffs. Did it against Tampa. And listen, that, that's, that's the talent that Matthew Stafford brings into this Rams organization. Like, this is why they went and got him. The things he can do with his eyes, his, not only his IQ in football, but just in general, his talent. I mean, I'm not surprised, man. The clutch throw he made to Cooper Cup, the fade route at the end in the end zone. I mean, he threw that thing up with, with uh, confidence. And you saw, not the thought in my mind, as soon as it was up in the air for Cooper Cup, touchdown, baby. You knew it. The way he bought the ball placement and everything, man, that's Stafford. We're used to it. We've seen it for 12 years. Now he didn't have as much talent around him. He had Calvin Johnson, of course, but for a short period of time. Now you have Cooper Cup, who's arguably had the greatest season in NFL history. So what, a, what a icing on the cake, man. If anyone's going to do it, that's Stafford. Stafford-esque throw. And people that want to say Jared Goff could do it, 
Keep thinking that, please. All right. Well, everybody in please. the chat, 313-552-6322. Get your calls in. Fish will be ready for you. We're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we're going to answer calls. We're going to answer all the messages going on in the chat. Make sure you drop a like during the break on our YouTube, please. We appreciate it. And we'll see you right after. But, Maddie. Yes. What do we got? Before we go, speaking of things that have not been answered... The Falling Warehouse, our challenge to right, Braylon well, and Brian. Well, listen, you're watching, that, you're watching that Super Bowl. Gets you in the mood, and the mood to play some Falling. And Falling Warehouse, located in Hamtramck, Michigan, home of the original Falling football bowling pin game called Falling. And host your corporate party. You could do that, or your team building event. Or you can just come in with family and friends. There's two ways to play. Either $10 unlimited open play. You could stay the whole time we are open that day. Or a private lane reservation for $120 for up to 10 people for two hours. They have 100 beers. They have also their $2 mystery beer machine. Ask Sawyer. He loves it. And multiple full bars. Bring the food or have it delivered in. Come get your full on. Check it out at thefollingwarehouse.com. It took exploring 50 different formulas and hosting countless taste tests, but we believe Gypsy Vodka is the smoothest vodka on the market. Don't believe us? Ask the owners. We're Mike and Adam Kazanowski with High Five Spirits Distillery. We're in a close to about 1,200 locations throughout Michigan. We wanted to create a brand that was geared more towards freedom, love, adventure, and at the end of the day, we really wanted to tell a story that inspired other people to take risks, follow their dreams, whatever that might be. Comerica Park, sunshine, the crack of the bat, more sunshine, warmth, we're almost there Detroit. Summer 2022 will be the summer of Woodward Sports. We just gotta make it through this damn cold first. Welcome back, thanks for joining us on Valentine's Day on the Morning Woodward Show here on the Woodward Sports Network. We're taking callers, so make sure you call in. Fish, do you have the first one for us, buddy? Uh, the person hung up. Oh, great. Oh, super. So, all right. Well, guys, if you want to call in, call in. But it's mailbag time. Let's get some questions. And, Jeff, where do you want to start? Well, listen, uh, For in terms of questions, and I know people are talking about the refs, if you think the refs are the reason why they won that game, please call in. We, we want to talk to you. We want to have a discussion. Don't be phone shy. Well, don't be I'm phone not, shy. I don't bite. <laughs> I yeah. can't I bite you over the phone. <laughs> you can give me a false name. You don't have to say it's you. It's fine. If you're, you're shy of what you're going to say, it's fine. Go yeah, ahead. no. All right, let's no. get the first caller in. All right. All right, who do we have the pleasure of speaking to this morning? Name, please. Lion Rumble 81. Oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> How's it going, going man? On, what up, baby? Oh, man, sky's the ceiling. How you feeling, man? Man, feeling great, feeling great. It's been a great <laughs> show so far. Um, I've impersonated yes, a doctor or therapist today, so I'm probably going to be arrested after the show. So, uh, you know, I'm just living my <laughs> life right now. Unbelievable. What a game. What a game. What a game. That's stellar game. Say, stellar man. game. What'd you make of, obviously, oh. we got to talk about it. What'd you make of Stafford's first year in L.A. and, and really what it means for Detroit moving forward? Uh, I think he licked this stamp for the uh, Hall of Fame, mm. uh, in my opinion. He's got just as many rings as Rodgers. Yep. Quickest to 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 yards passing. You can't uh, – You. I don't think. I don't think anybody has any arguments. Like, we knew the team was bad. We knew we, – we've been asking for the Ford to sell the team for years, and this is why. Um, he didn't have a run game, but yet he once again put the team on his shoulders. Everybody believed in one another, and he drove them down that field and scored. He Everybody absolutely knew it was did. Going to cup the entire time. You knew it was going to cup. None of his other receivers could catch. Bingo. None of them could get open. Bingo. And it's, it's crazy to me. Again, you knew cup was the singular target. And you couldn't stop Absolutely. him. I mean, that's why I believe, again, I don't think anybody has had a better season than Jared Goff has, or excuse me, Cooper <laughs> Cup has. Yeah, watch. Uh, too, too many white guys from L.A., sorry. I get confused. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I was – and he, I mean, he, he paid homage to Detroit, you know, him and his wife in a pregame. So I thought that was pretty dope. Yeah, um, no, I, yeah, they're, the, they're a uh, class act. They're, they really are a class act. Look, you want exactly. to talk about a family that deserves it just off the field? I mean, dealing with what yep. she had to with her cancer situation in her, oh, uh, I believe it was brain cancer yep. Yep. or brain a tumor, tumor in her yeah. head. D to deal yeah. with that, have three children, not sure what's next, oh, what am I doing? Like, just yeah. off the field stuff, I couldn't be happier for, for better people who, to be honest, look, you don't like some of the stuff she said when she was in Detroit. Look, I don't care. That's people's opinion. They can have it. But at the end of the day, right. the stuff she did in the community, you don't forget that. I don't forget that mm -hmm. she showed up to Woodward Sports with a U-Haul full of toys for kids at CS Mott's Children's Hospital. That. 
So, and that's that's love, regardless whether we, you know, whether people love him or hate him, he's still our child. He still grew up in Detroit. He was he built here, man. He was built here, and he was ready for the exactly. moment because of the 12 years of disaster and chaos. That when he got to LA <laughs> yeah. and he had a coach, he had a roster. Even when the chaos came, they were good enough because he could lead them past it. And let's not, yeah, and let's not forget that team's full of misfits. Nobody wanted Jalen Ramsey. Mm. Everybody was Man, saying uh, Von Miller didn't have anything left in the tank and all these other guys. OBJ was a Robinson even, man. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I'm and, happy uh, for so many players on that football team. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I love you guys this platform. Thank you, guys. Keep, uh, keep doing it, man. You guys are awesome. No, thank you, you Rumble, man. for coming on here yeah, and preaching Thank facts. you so much for the call. We appreciate yeah. it. We appreciate it so much. All right, Fish, do we have another caller or do we go to the chat? All right, we got a caller. Let's take it. Who? Do we have on the line right now? You're on the Morning Woodward Show. Hello? Hello? Hello. Welcome. Oh, my gosh. Adam, <laughs> Jeff, Maddie, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, my. I didn't think I'd get it on, but I just <laughs> want to say thanks for a wonderful season from everybody at Woodward. Adam, you've just been a delight to tune into every morning. Thank you Jeff, very much. excellent analysis. I appreciate it. Oh, my gosh. What a game, guys. Oh, what right? a game. What a game. Oh, my gosh. What's, what's your biter at the end? You saw Stafford on the end, too, just, like, looking at the ground. Mm -hmm. It was everything we never gave him in Detroit. Well, what's your name? I, I got to know your name, he, at least. This is Sam. This is Samuel. All right. So we, got Samuel. Another Samuel. All another Sam. we got three Sams in the studio right now. One on the phone, Sam, the other booth, and Fish. What a, what a good day. It's a good day yeah. to be a Sam. It's a great day to be a Sam. Um, <laughs> it, it's a great day to be a Sam. You know, we got Shtick in there, Shtick, you know, eating a little bit of crow today, but he came around, you know, we, we got him to come around. Yep. He's been riding Stafford as a yep. hater for a long time, <laughs> but, you know, he saw the light, you know. Not everybody has yet at no. word, but, you know, not everybody. Yeah. They're still no. hiding. They're still hiding. Yeah, they're it's in the shadows, good. yeah. I was feeling it, though, in that fourth quarter. We watched Stafford do his come-from-behind, last-minute drive, mm -hmm. puts their team ahead, but it's just not enough. There's still a shot for overtime. And, like, to see what we missed on in Aaron Donald when we got Ebron. When, when we had the – we could have got a closer like that, yeah. but we never gave him. You know, Sue being what Sue is, you know, he's, he's, he's dominant inside, but he was always the guy who gave us that costly penalty. Absolutely. He was that guy. And then we got Donald last night. Shows what we missed on. Why Stafford was trapped in Detroit for years. It was trapped. This guy could have done it for us for years, but we never gave him that. And I'm going to just leave that with you guys. It was so vindicating last night to see, oh, there's the guy we should have drafted. Yeah. He showed up. He closed it out. Love you guys. Love the season. Can't wait for more. I'll appreciate it, Sam. Chat, you have you know? a great Monday, yeah, buddy. Yeah, appreciate you, Sam, a lot. Thank you so Thanks, much for Sam. calling in. Yep, love it. All right, Fish, we got another caller, or am I going to the chat? No, we got one more. I believe it's Anthony again, Ooh. our good friend. All right, yeah. Anthony, let's hear it. Guys, I had to call back. I don't mean to hijack the show either, okay? I was <laughs> but I got to let you know. I got to fill you in. So here's the thing. We're, we, I call. I'm hyped. Um, as soon as I got off the phone with you, I called my boss. I told him, hey, guess what? I'm not coming in today. Uh, boss says, boss says uh, well, you don't have any sick days left. You got to come in. I say, not happening, boss. I went <laughs> right home. I took, off, I took off all my clothes. I don't mean to be, you know, I'm, I'm about to hop in the shower. I'm in nothing but my boxes uh, right now. I'm right. screaming out the window at people. You know, and stab, stab. Yeah, no one knows what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> We're getting too much information, right. but I love it. <laughs> I love it. I listen, love it. honestly, listen, honestly, Anthony, listen. I would have done the show in boxers <laughs> yeah. if it didn't mean it would cost it, me my job. So yeah, I'd agree. I'm with listen, you. Listen, you know what? Here's the thing: when things when things heat up like this, when it gets hot mm -hmm. in Detroit, when it gets hot in Woodward, when it gets hot in LA, you gotta <laughs> take the clothes off. You're absolutely okay. right. I'm with you. Listen, I'll be. I'm doing a parade by myself, Don Woodward, on Friday. I'm gonna be in my underwear only. Do you have a time? 
Hell yeah. Uh, probably either, it, probably when it's uh, BDE is live or bottom line. I haven't yeah. decided he, yet. He may even be butt naked. But I'm going to be in the back of the Woodward truck. I'm going to be holding Martha, Sheila, William Clay Ford signs. I'm going to be butt naked in my boxers. I'm, I'll maybe even wear a Speedo. No. Who knows? Butt naked in my boxers. Let me ask you They're a question. They're see-through. Let me ask you a question. As two Lions fans, as two Lions fans, if we strip down butt naked, no, 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 we got our underwear on, we got our Speedos on. If we strip down to nothing but our Speedos, is there something wrong with us hugging? Um, you know, if you say I'm married so I can get away with it, I don't know about you. I could, I think I'm I could get away with it, but I've also vocally said on this show that there are two <laughs> quarterbacks in the NFL I'd smash, Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo G. and Joe Burrow. So I, I maybe not, Jimmy probably G not the guy you want to hug, cute. man. <laughs> Jimmy G is such a, Jimmy G is such a looker. Let me tell you something about Jimmy G. I had a poster of him when I was a child in my room, um, <laughs> just because he was so handsome. Hey, listen, I don't blame you. I'm I don't a, blame you. Anthony, I got to let you go. I got to answer some questions for some other people, but enjoy your day Anthony. off, bud. Anthony, Thanks, please call Anthony. back another time. I love can you, buddy. Just, can I, how, how often do you think realistically that I could call in and just talk to you guys? Uh, you, I mean, any you call in any time whenever we take callers on the show, bud. Any time. Okay, because I think I found my new home. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Anthony. Oh, buddy. We right. love you. I'm going to go to the next question. Right, Let's see. I'm not see. my clothes on all day. I'm not going to work. Let's, Let's go. All right. Appreciate all right, it, Anthony. Go Thank you so meatballs. much. I'm going to go make some meatballs. Um, Thank you. I got I to gotta get the sauce going now. It's like an eight-hour hey, process. I'm going to make some meatballs. Anthony, um, Anthony, are you Italian? Well, now, what the hell do you think, boss? All right, let's go, baby. Just making 100%. sure. 100%. Let's go! <laughs> All right, I love you guys. All right, um, Anthony, I'm take care, take care. My love my fellow. Oh, fellow my goodness. Diggers. Take you, care, Anthony. I'm going to, you Italians are, are something. <laughs> I really, you know, I didn't plan on telling you any of that when I called in. I didn't think that I was going to tell <laughs> you all that. We, we love it, honest. though. We love the TMI. <laughs> next time, next time I call in, I'm going to, I'll prepare a little bit better. All right. I appreciate it, Anthony. Thank you so much. Take care, buddy. Man, what, what, happy Valentine's Day. What a gem. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what a happy gem. Valentine's Day. Jesus Christ. Day. My my head's going to explode. That was amazing. <laughs> he goes, All right. What do you think? We got a minute. What do you think? We got a minute. So, you know what? No more questions. I just want to tell you guys one thing before we go. Thank you for being a part of this journey for the last seven months on the Morning Woodward Show. I can't thank you guys enough. It's been a long NFL season. Yeah. A lot, a lot has been discussed. Obviously, I hope you enjoyed all the dancers, the cigars, the smokes, the fun moments, good, bad times, doesn't matter here on the morning show. We evolve into the next part of the season. Hopefully, there's Tigers baseball. That would be nice. Yes. But regardless, just thank you. Thank you for waking up every morning with us. Thank you for being a part of the morning show mm -hmm. every single morning. From Maddie, Jeff, Fish, Alex, Stick, myself. We thank you. You guys have a happy Valentine's Day. Can't thank you guys enough. Thank you to all of our sponsors, of course. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you for making this possible. And we'll see you guys all for tomorrow. And I promise you, I will be just as annoying and as insufferable tomorrow as I was today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you so much. God bless.